a playoff mentality tonight. It's win or go home. And the Red Wolves come in here with a chip on their shoulder. He said, this is going to be a heavyweight title fight. Both of us bloody. Both of us throwing haymakers all night long. And eventually, somebody's going to flinch. And then he told us, it ain't going to be us. We've got a slobber knocker tonight, boys. Marty Smith, you weren't going to contain that mustache too long. Even the mask wanted no part of that fired up. This has been the Nissan pregame rush. And you look at the Sun Belt Championship since 2011. Appalachian State uh, recently joined the conference. 2014 is when they decided to hop in. They've been dominant ever since. Four consecutive Sun Belt Championships. Arkansas State five since 2011 and six overall. These have been the two premier teams for the Sun Belt when it comes to titles. Ready to put it back on the line tonight as we strap it up. App State back on the field for the first time in 26 days. Fired up and ready to go. Rashad Paul deep to receive for Arkansas State. Chandler Stanton to kick. We had 1,200 yards offense last Thursday. No pressure. Sun Belt back on ESPN. Paul's going to field that at his three-yard line. And he'll take it just past the 26 as Logan Bonner is going to get the start for Arkansas State. And Logan Bonner, as we see there, the Texas native redshirt junior, was the day one starter in 2019, came in, earned that job out of camp before suffering a thumb injury that sidelined him. And that was when we saw and met Lane Hatcher. But Logan Bonner's a guy used to operating this offense at a high level, has thrown at least one touchdown to nine different receivers. They spread it around. And again, this is a true two quarterback system. They will change every possession right out of the gate. It's Jamal Jones. And he'll be met immediately by an App State defense that likes to hang their hat on the fact that they're gonna hit you, only allowing 163.7 pass yards a game and ranked second nationally with passer rating. So they're gonna give you every bit of it against Logan Bonner in this high-powered Arkansas State offense that scored over 50 points the last two games. A play fake over the middle. That caught over the middle by Jonathan Adams, who is one of the star receivers on this team. And if you look at the impact players for both the Red Wolves and Mountaineers, Offensively, it's the receivers, Dahu Green and Jonathan Adams, against two very talented corners. Dahu Green, big time length, athleticism. And Jay Adams, they talk about this guy and rave about him. A two-sport athlete, a guy who's a basketball player here as well, but took the time focusing on football alone this year, said his confidence is really growing each and every day as he masters the craft of wide receiver. So no gain on that play. Bring it up second and ten. We've got a whistle. False start. Offense. Number nine. Five-yard penalty. Replay. Second down. And you can just feel for App State, again, they've been off the field for 26 days. They said immediately they wanted to rush the ball, get to the ball, and make a statement early on because they just haven't played football in almost a month. Bonner off the fake. He's going to look over the middle. Nice floater to Green, and he just overshoots his receiver, falls incomplete. Bring it up third and long. And that is not how you draw it up on defense. That is some of the rust. The safety committing hard to the outside. And Dahu Green gets a run on a linebacker in the middle there. You see the double move. He was wide open and Bonner just missed him. App State going to want to correct that early. Nine and four, the guy you're going to want to watch in every key situation, this third down included. Nine down at the bottom all alone. Got to imagine they're looking his way. Bonner does look left. Pressured, brought down, sacked. Ball comes out. Tackled on the play by Caleb Sperlin. And that'll bring up a fourth down. And immediately, App State's defense gets pressure on Logan Bonner. And that's a great push-pull by Sperlin up top. 
gets the lineman on his feet. That's a three-man rush. If you're looking to knock the rust off and your three guys up front can get pressure like that on their own, it's going to be a long night for this Arkansas State passing attack. So a good start for the Mountaineers. Now fourth and 21. Snap, clean, punt off. And that's Malik Williams, the speedster, who has room outside. And Malik Williams able to get out of bounds after a nice return, but a flag on the play. Looked like we saw a crack back on the back end of this. One of those plays they're looking to take out of college football coming back in towards the line of scrimmage, parallel with or perpendicular to, usually going to get you tagged. And we've seen it over the past couple of weeks because of them emphasizing that rule. There's a couple where we'll watch and it's debatable. Let's get the call. Personal foul, blindside block, return team. The 15-yard foul, first down, Appalachian State. And again, there are some that you see and you say, yeah, that needs to be flagged. And there are others that you say it's just football. Nonetheless, a penalty after the punt by Ryan Hansen. 44-yard punt. And this is where we'll take our first look at the Appalachian State offense led by their quarterback, Zach Thomas. Zach Thomas, one of their captains. We mentioned in the Open 2018 Sun Belt Player of the Year on offense. And the only reason he maybe missed out last year is because a guy named Darrington Evans was in this backfield doing some pretty great things on offense. He took it home in 2019. Their offensive coordinator, Tony Peterson, believes they have three starting running backs and a quick pitch to Williams off the side. And Malik Williams, their speedster, they're going to want to get him the ball plenty tonight, brought down after a gain of five. When you think of Appalachian State, you think of a dominant rushing attack, but it can manifest in a lot of ways. And number 14, Malik Williams, is a guy this coaching staff and Tony Peterson, their offensive coordinator, said, we need to get the ball more often. Something to watch for the Red Wolves, a defensive coordinator change after last week and giving up the points and the yards against Georgia State is that's Dedrick Harrington who's going to have enough for the first down. And it was a tough decision for head coach Blake Anderson to make. He fired his defensive coordinator, Dave Duggan, and promoted Nick Perepsky, the new defensive coordinator now for the Red Wolves, after what happened last week. And, and he said the response he got from his players reinforced that it was the correct decision. They came and told their coach, they said, Coach, we appreciate you prioritizing what's best for the team over someone we know was a close friend of yours. 583 total yards given up by this Arkansas dead defense just a week ago. Now third and short for App State, right up the gut. And a big gain for Harrington as they move the change for a first down. Harrington on third and one, enough to pick up the first down, a gain of 20. Appalachian State has two running plays in their offense, inside zone and outside zone. And when you've got tight ends that can get involved in the run game and blocking back, it creates great seams for cutbacks on the backside. Darrington, Datrick, excuse me, exploring one there for the first down. So first and 10, Appalachian State just shy of midfield, a play fake for Thomas, rolls to his right, looks over the middle of the field and a quick catch and throw. That should be good enough for a first down. That's Thomas Hennigan, his reliable target for Thomas. Sean Clark said Thomas Hennigan might run a 4-7-40 with the wind at his back. He is not a guy that's gonna wow you with how fleet of foot he is but an unbelievable contested catcher of the football. 13 contested catches back in 2019, near the tops in the nation. So that again moves the chains, App State into Arkansas State territory. The 43 yard line. And that's Harrington again, who they're riding heavily on this first drive. Their offensive coordinator, Tony Peterson, told us he's got three backs. They're going to see the true freshman, Nate Noel. There's four guys that they really like on this offense to do what App State likes to do, which is run the ball. Incredible job by tight end number 18, Mike Evans, taking two in the hole on that play. But you saw C.J. Harris fill downhill. That star spot, that third safety body on the field, going to be huge for Arkansas State. Motion and a flag on the play. Pitched the ball to Cameron Peoples, another one of the running backs we'll see tonight. 18, offense, five-yard penalty, 
Replay, second down. That's funny, the coaching staff tells us Appalachian State has two running plays. It takes me back to remember the Titans when they said, yeah, Coach Boone, this, this playbook works pretty thin. He's like, Novocaine, give it time, always works. And that's what this offense has done for years. And they told me we had two plays, then immediately we see pullers and a toss right there. I feel deceived. And that's the idea for the defense. You need to throw in wrinkles when you've had this kind of layoff time. Sean Clark and Appalachian State Mountaineer through and through the first year head coach. Zach Thomas looks deep, has a receiver, caught, touchdown, Christian Wells. And that was quick for Appalachian State, 46 yard touchdown. And just like that, the four time Sun Belt champs up on Arkansas State. Matt, there was nothing fancy about this, nothing pretty about this. You got a bunch to the left. You got 16 matched up on a safety in C.J. Harris, and he just flat out ran past him. Six plays, 85 yards, and effective. Chandler State on for the extra point. And it didn't take a long time for App State to get that 26-day layoff dusted off. Zach Thomas to Christian Wells. Call him ball plays early in Boone. 7-0 Mountaineers. Frost. Christian Wells, a big touchdown to put App State up 7-0 of this big Sun Belt game. Matt Berry, Mike Golick Jr., Marty Smith on the call. As the Mountaineers have won this conference four years in a row, Rashad Paul deep to receive the Chandler State and kick. Paul at his goal line going to have another opportunity for a return and finds his way out to the left side, collected by a group of Mountaineers just shy of the 25-yard line. And it is now time for Lane Hatcher and his series for Arkansas State. Lane Hatcher is the beneficiary of the thumb, and thumb injury to Logan Bonner and used to take the advantage of leverage. Four-time wrestling state champion in high school, all everything in Arkansas high school football, the leader in yards and pass touchdowns. Spent his freshman year at Alabama before finding his way to Arkansas State. And since he stepped foot on the field, he's pushed for more and more playing time. This used to be a two to one ratio in favor of Logan Bonner. He has pushed it to even reps with his play. What Blake Anderson will tell you about these players is it doesn't work without buy-in. That Lincoln Perry, the freshman out of Tennessee, tackled for a loss on the play by George Blackstock. And what you're seeing early is what Arkansas State was afraid of trying to get the run game going and having an inability to. Appalachian State wants to make every down look like a blitz on their side. DeMarco Jackson, Trey Cobb, fast, aggressive linebackers who want to play downhill. So loss of three, second and 13. And the fake to Perry, Hatcher to throw right off his back foot, finds Green over the middle. Paul, ball tipped, but Green comes down with it, first down Arc State. We saw so much going straight down the field for Arkansas State last week, but I think these in-breaking routes and here on the run pass option look are gonna be key against great corners like Sean Jolly. So here comes the tempo, here comes another fake. Hatcher gonna look deep, and Adams, Adams has his man beat in a big gain for Jonathan Adams Jr. inside the 20 yard line. Just good on good, straight past him right here. The aforementioned Sean Jolly. And this is what Adams does best, contested catches at the point of attack. He's so strong through contact. That's the basketball background, treating every jump ball like a rebound. So the ball spotted at the 20, gain of 42. Here come the Red Wolves. Hatcher again the fake to Perry. Again sets his feet, goes to the end zone, overthrown, intended for Brandon Bowling. So we saw the in-breaking route from Dahu Green. We saw them target bowling, and I think that middle of the field is gonna be key for them all night. We saw Dahu Green have success getting matched up on a safety. They challenged Reed Tyler in this tight end room to be great blockers, but we saw Reed down in the red zone last Thursday night catching a contested touchdown. They're gonna need to exploit the middle of the field with bowling, Reed, and Lincoln Perry, their running back. You speak of Perry, fakes the reverse. Perry tries to get outside. Nothing doing, tackled on that play by number 13, Caden Smith. Helped on the play also by DeMarco Jackson. 
you would expect with these talented corners, Shamar, Jean Charles, and Sean Jolly on Green and Adams to expect a big game out of Brandon Bowling, some of these other players that won't have all-conference caliber corners on it. So third and nine. And you see Bowling in the slot right there, got a lot of room, got a safety body over the top of him. Hatcher, plenty of time, and that is Bowling out of the backfield, slides out of bounds just short of the first down line at the 11. Love to see a tone setter here. Take your shot early and go for it. You've got fourth and a doable one. You came into this game saying you wanted to establish the run. We've seen them go. Big bodies on the field, couple of tight ends, and then a great time to get the ball one-on-one -on -one to nine up top if he's uncovered and has space. Mike Golick Jr., we had combined 111 points last Thursday. What makes you think we were gonna have a field goal this early? Adams in motion, Hatcher rolls right. And he's gonna keep it himself, and Lane Hatcher gonna pick up the first down for Arkansas State. And what a great job just using his shoulders on the fake there to get the linebacker to jump outside just a little bit, and that was all he needed, mobile enough to get it. Lane Hatcher, the slightly more mobile of the two quarterbacks we're gonna see tonight. And now, you've got first and goal here, and I'd imagine number nine is gonna get a look here early. I'm not a fan of the fade down here, but they've got a great player for it. Eighth play of the drive for the Red Wolves, responding after the App State touchdown on their opening drive. That's Jones up the middle, and Jamal Jones takes it in for Arkansas State. And an impressive bounce back drive for the Red Wolves, extra point away from a tie ball game. And this is a great job. Right guard was a bit of an issue, struggle for them last week. But 78, Justin Dutton in there right now was the guy that came in and helped stabilize them. And that time you see getting just enough movement, prying his man out of the hole for a walk-in touchdown for Jamal Jones. What did Blake Anderson tell us this week? We need to run the ball. Same with their offensive coordinator, Keith Heckendorf. Blake Groupie on for the extra point. Groupies kick good, and it just has that kind of feeling. All tied at seven here on ESPN. ESPN College Football is brought to you by Allstate. You've never been in better hands. And cheese it cheesy, crunchy satisfaction. App State, a cradle of coaches in its own right. New head coach Sean Clark, the man in charge of his alma mater. But Marty Smith, the one thing those other coaches didn't have to deal with, a pandemic. Absolutely, Matty. Sean Clark is tough as woodpecker lips, and he got it honest as he was trying to negotiate everything that came with a debilitating COVID-19 outbreak here at Appalachian State. He called up his father, a Vietnam veteran whom Clark says doesn't suffer fools. So he, he goes, so I call up my dad to complain about how hard all of this is, and he cuts me off mid-sentence and says, son, shut up, you're made for this, and then hung up in his ear. Tell you what, between that and the woodpecker lips, it's a tough conversation to deal with. The kick goes into the end zone, it'll be a touchback for Zach Thomas in the Appalachian State offense. But you look at Sean Clark, and what I love about him, I'm a sucker for coaches at their alma mater. And he embodies everything that this program is all about. And you can just tell that Appalachian State, Boone, North Carolina, it's in his blood. He said when we first got on the call, we're a little different up here on the mountain. This is a guy who was an All-American for them as an offensive lineman, was on the staff as an O-line coach. And now that team has taken on that identity, that family atmosphere they've created, and that hard-nosed attitude they bring to their run game. And we saw it early on in the first drive, the fake to Harrington. Thomas rolls right, going to set his feet. He's going to go deep again and just misses Christian Horn. We have a flag on the play. You gotta hold on for dear life from Anthony Switzer, number seven on the back end, who was about to get the double move and said, nah, I'll live to not see the touchdown on this play.
Pass interference. Defense. It'll be a 15-yard foul. Automatic first down. And again, Arkansas State's defense, they're young on the back end. They can struggle sometimes on the back end. And Tony Peterson, who calls ball plays for Appalachian State, said, we're going to look at their eyes. If we see someone that's got bad eyes, we're going to take a shot downfield. So the ball now at the 40, the give to Harrington off tackle. Nothing doing for Dietrich Harrington down to Marty. And listening to the wide receivers after that last touchdown for Appalachian State, Matt, standing right here by the bench, they were kind of breaking down how that touchdown unfolded. And it seemed like a couple of them were saying that the Arkansas State DBs were flat-footed. They were all in that motion, noting that they're flat-footed. So, Mike, you might want to watch that and see if they might take a shot. No gain on the play, second and 10, and a quick out caught by Malik Williams. A and gain of six. And one of the ways you can get them flat footed is what App State loves to do. They said, we're going to window dress everything. When you've only got two plays, you're looking for creative ways to get to those. So they're going to move these bodies all around the field, sometimes at the snap of the football, just to try and buy the eyes. Like you said, that eye discipline from a young back end that's still working through communication. Stress them a little more right at the snap. And if they flinch for a second, we've seen they'll run past. A little more on the defensive coordinator, Nick Peremsky. He was coaching safeties. He knows the unit. He knows the back end just needs the buy-in now Harrington off the left side and Datrick Harrington is going to score for Appalachian State touchdown Mountaineers 55 yarder two possessions two touchdowns and it looks as if App State has been doing just fine off the football field in preparation for this one A three-play, 75-yard drive, just a minute 21 off the clock. Chandler Staten's extra point is good. And for those keeping an eye on that kind of thing, the point total in this game was 67. We've got 21 midway through the first quarter. I like our odds. We're back after this. Remember that National Vote Early Day is October 24th. For more information, visit IamAVoter.com. 14-7, Appalachian State up early over Arkansas State. Don't want to get anybody excited, but right now we're on pace for 124 points. And we see how we're getting there. Appalachian State on offense doing a phenomenal job of getting the defense standing flat-footed, as Marty referenced. Arkansas State scored on their last possession. Chandler Staten to kick. Rashad Paul again at his goal line. He's going to field it at about the one. And Paul's going to take it outside, just shy of the 30-yard line. Golik Jr., show us how it happened. Yeah, you look at that last touchdown. This is how you get him flat-footed. Take a look at the tight end number 85 right here and the motion man coming across. Both designed in this instance to make sure the backside of this defense has to think a second longer. You see them standing there. You see number three on the front side, Kenneth Harris, occupying the same gap as another defender. And he finds the seam and is gone. Using motion in that window dressing pre-snap to get the defense to just have to think a split second longer. And they're hitting the head in the goalpost. Give credit to Ryan Newsel to key block the left guard, number 58 in that one. So it'll be Logan Bonner's possession. All right, so a block in the back brought that ball back to the 15-yard line. And a first and 10 for Bonner, early movement. False start. Offense. Number 78. Be a five yard penalty. Replay. First down. Right now, Arkansas State just a little bit out of sync. 
And we saw this in the first series with Logan Bonner. They're just not quite able to hook up. He overthrew Dahu Green on a play that he was wide open behind this defense. You want to keep your foot on the gas if you're Arkansas State? Keep this a track meet for a team that was off the practice field for 17 days. And that is worth pointing out. The touchdown possession was Lane Hatcher back to Bonner, who got the start. The fake to Lincoln Perry over the middle, thrown behind Brandon Bowling, falls incomplete. Covered on the play by Brendan Harrington. We mentioned before targeting the middle of the field. You saw Brandon Bowling there, who had a 100-yard receiving game against Coastal. But Lincoln Perry, number 22, their running back, a true freshman, but a guy they said, we want to put more on his plate because he's so gifted as a receiver out of the backfield and as a runner. Scored two touchdowns a week ago, the winning touchdown against Georgia State. Bonner back to throw, and that's complete to one of his tight ends, Reed Tyler, flag on the play. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number nine. The 15 yards, added in the run. First down. There's some penalty help, face mask on the Mountaineers. Big Demetrius Taylor, who had, you could call it the game of the century against North Carolina last year. The only player this millennium with two and a half sacks, two forced fumbles, a fumble return for a touchdown, and an interception all in one game. An absolute force as they took the Carolinas last year, swept them all together. Their defensive coordinator, Dale Jones, says we like to line him up in their weakest player and let him loose. So now first and 10, Arkansas State. Fake to Perry, Bonner has to climb the pocket, a pump fake, and a nice job finding Dahu Green, who's gonna have enough for the first down, and a gain of 14. The respect that they're giving these guys on the outside. You see Shamar Jean Charles bailing out of there. And so they're going to take it underneath. They know these are very athletic, gifted corners. Pro Football Focus graded this as their number one quarterback, cornerback tandem in college football for a reason. Lincoln Perry the fake again and looking for Green again. Receiver and quarterback not on the same page. There's a couple of chess matches I'm excited to watch tonight. One of them is Gene Charles and Jolly up against Green and Adams. But also Dale Jones, defensive coordinator, who came back for his second stint at Appalachian State, and Keith Heckendorf calling ball plays for Arkansas State. Spent a year with Scott Satterfield at Louisville coaching linebackers there, but knew this is where home was for him. We got that opportunity. They said, we didn't talk money. It was a simple yes, and he was ready to go. So Bonner, second and 10, hit immediately after he throws, finds Tyler, tackled on the play by number 12, Stephen Jones. And you see a lot of it underneath right now, working underneath, working in the middle here. Arkansas State got home last week with a lot of double moves, a lot of slant and goes, a lot of stutter goes from the guys on the outside. So you nickel and dime them underneath, you get in a third down situation like this, and again, you've got a lot of space around 16 bowling in the slot. Third and eight, ball at midfield. Bonner brought down, sacked by Trey Cobb. And for the second Logan Bonner series, Appalachian State able to force the punt. They said they want to make it look like a blitz every play. They didn't make it look like it. This was just one more than you can block. And Seven gets a free hit because of it. Everyone up front is occupied right here. But when you've only got six guys to block seven, someone's coming free, that ball's got to come out and just had no opportunity there. Again, this is an Appalachian State defense that only allows just under 164 yards a game passing. A whistle before the Ryan Hansen punt. Timeout. Appalachian State, proud of the snap. So first charge timeout. It'll be a 30-second timeout in length. You know, if there's a little bit extra juice to start this college football weekend, here's why. The Big Ten begins this weekend. And Saturday, we're going to have the oldest trophy game in college football history. 
Number 21, Minnesota, hosted 18, Michigan for the Little Brown Jug. It's the 98th version. First time they played for the Jug was 1903, 7.30 Eastern ABC in the ESPN app. Tanner Morgan, one of those quarterbacks coming back in the Big 12 that perhaps doesn't get as much attention as Justin Fields, but perhaps he should. I can say third highest QBR returning this year behind Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields. Set records up and down Minnesota. That explosive passing offense for P.J. Fleck looking to row the boat again this year. Rashad Bateman, of course, he opted out and then opted right back in. But I'll tell you this, I've heard whispers from Ann Arbor about Joe Milton. And could he be the quarterback that Jim Harbaugh has been looking for since he returned to his alma mater? All right, after the timeout, again, the punt, Ryan Hansen. Gonna punt to Malik Williams. Williams a fair catch at the 12 yard line. And we've seen that. Everyone thinks App State, and you immediately think that downhill running game we talk so much about in the open, but we've seen a steady diet of quick passes to Malik Williams to start off. The deep touchdown to Christian Wells. They've been opening up the run through their passing game using that motion and deep down the field shots. And we still haven't heard from one of their track stars, number 11, Jalen Virgil, who they're excited to turn loose down here as well. Don't let the nature of this offense fool you. They've got legitimate outside weapons. So after the punt of 45 yards, Zach Thomas and the Mountaineers offense has been able to do whatever they've wanted so far. First and 10 from their own 12. And that's going to be Cameron Peoples off the left side. Get a gain of three. We were wondering what mentality we get. Nick Peremski takes over as defensive coordinator, and Blake Anderson said in the call, he's a fiery redhead just like me and Marty. So I expect them to come downhill a little more, try and challenge Appalachian State at the line of scrimmage. The best way to stop this outside zone, flatten it out, bring blitzers from the second level towards the front side. So second and six, and again, it's Peoples off the left side, and they're going to keep running that ball until they dare you not to, met by a host of Arkansas State defenders. Led by 97, Terry Hampton. That's a great job, and it's not glorious work by Forrest Merrill either. As you get a look at Nick Peremski in the booth for his first game as the defensive coordinator for the Red Wolves. Set him up for a third and five here now as we see Malik Williams in the slot right here. Again, two touchdowns, first two possessions. Thomas, nothing to it. Find Zach Crosby will be enough for the first down. App State likes to have fun with this tight end group. Zach Crosby, number 85, Mike Evans, number 18. They're going to move them around all over the place, use them right there in that flat range on run pass options, sneak them out the backside on bootlegs. They're the sort of chess match pieces for this offense. Peoples off the left side, tackled on the play, 92 Forrest Merrill. And that's the thing about Appalachian State. They're going to do what they do best. And the balance of this offense, we've already seen it in the first quarter, 90 yards rushing, 72 yards throwing. And two touchdowns on two possessions. 129 career starts up front on your offensive line will give you that kind of confidence in this group. And Peoples tackled for a loss. It's Merrill again, and that'll do it for the first quarter in Boone, North Carolina. Ten combined Sun Belt championships between these two schools, and we've got a good one brewing here on ESPN. The recipe for some vintage Sun Belt football. 14-7 Appalachian State after one start of the second quarter. Matt Barry, Mike Golick Jr., the man, the Marty, the party, Marty Smith, out there in Boone, North Carolina. So we had a combined 264 yards of total offense. Balance out of Appalachian State. Hasn't played in 26 days. 
and a third and eight for Zach Thomas as we begin the second quarter. And Thomas, much like the last third down, a quick strike, this to Malik Williams, move the chains for the Mountaineers. Malik Williams, they're getting him down in the slot, getting him matched up in a lot of space around some safeties that are giving him well-deserved respect, an incredible athlete. And here comes the tempo, quick throw to Christian Wells, who caught the touchdown for the first score of the game. And here comes the Appalachian State offense, two plays in a row, 14 yards. This is where they want to live, too. Once they get up past the 50, it's four down territory from there on out. Jack Thomas again, quick strike. Christian Horn comes up with it. We were just talking about this in the commercial break, Matt. Want to keep seeing App State go to the air. They've shown the ability to get downfield with their passing attack. These short ones are going to give way to a deep shot here quick. Play fake to Peoples. Thomas to his left, throwing across his body over the middle, nearly intercepted. And a dangerous throw there, almost picked off by number 12. For oh. Arkansas State. In and out of the hands. C.J. Harris. And you see, this is, this is Zach Thomas rolling away from his arm. He's got a lot of strength to his game. He's extremely polished when I watch him. That's the word that comes to mind. But the massive arm strength isn't going to blow you away. Being able to go away from your throwing arm and try and throw back across your body like that is never going to be his strong suit. An incomplete to Sean Davis, the intended receiver. Tony Peterson told us as soon as we cross the 50, kicking is not an option. There's some mentality for them, quite frankly. It's why I'm surprised there wasn't a run. They'll, they'll absolutely hand the ball off in 30 and medium situations, knowing they've got a fourth and short. But again, these are the spots we can look to see. Thomas Hennigan, number five, up at the top of your screen here. Sure hands, great catching in traffic in a situation like this for uh, first down yardage. And it's all a part of that App State attitude that they say, you know what, you're going to come into our house and we are going to get you. Thomas is going to have to roll out. And Zach Thomas can use his feet for a big gain and another first down for the Mountaineers. However, after the gain of 24, he did something the quarterback's not supposed to do, which is run out of bounds. A great job breaking contain, using his legs. He is an absolute dual threat. But you're right, that's a no-no in this offense. And this, you see yeah. the timeout now, this may be where he gets to talking to. Time out. <laughs> Coach has told us. Arkansas State. Your quarterback on this Arkansas offense, you don't slide, you don't run out of bounds. Same for the running back. You think he'll get pulled? Somehow I think he's all right. I, I think they're going to break the rule for this one. We're right back. Plan to play brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Matt, you can keep your video game numbers and give me big boy stuff. Watch the two nose guards at work. Number 55, George Blackstock, only about 270, but active, getting hits on the quarterback, occupying blockers. And the other side, 92, Forrest Merrill in the middle there, occupying a couple defenders. Here you're going to watch him shed the right guard, rip, and make a play in the middle. It's not pretty. But these are the guys asked to muck it up in the middle of these defenses. My Uncle Bob did it for years in the NFL. It's like being a fire hydrant in the middle there, but these guys do it well. Quick toss on the play. Around the left side. And a gain of eight. Your Uncle Bob was also phenomenal in Saved by the Bell the college years. I feel like Marty and Blake Anderson would both appreciate the mullet as well. Do not let Uncle Bob go by without his acting chops. Harrington. I beg your pardon, Cameron Peoples off the right side. Tackle on the play by Antonio Fletcher. Second and two here. This is a good time to take a look towards the end zone. We see the jumbo package coming in right here. Third and one, excuse me. Short yardage. They're going to make no bones about it. One thing I appreciate about St App State, masters of the obvious. You see extra O-line bodies in. Guess where this ball's going? Off the left tackle, of course. Left guard, Cameron Peoples is going to get the first down. They don't even 
even put him in eligible numbers. 75 and 74, both backup offensive linemen getting in here and working after the play. We call that an efficient run in the business. They don't all got to go for touchdowns. They just got to move the chains. Sean Clark, offensive line coach by trade, said offensive line needs to be the heartbeat of this program. And you see this diamond backfield formation. Don't be surprised if they leak number 85, Zach Crosby, out of here. Try and get him in the flat. I love this formation to give the Peoples off the left side. And the ball looked like it scored out for a minute, but Peoples was able to fall on it. And this just one of those lunch pail, blue collar, inside the 20 moves. And you see right here, the ball does squirt out. A favorable bounce Man. right back into people's hands. That's unbelievable. The offensive lineman uses his left leg as a putter. Watch him just putt this right back into his chest. That's good teamwork. Second and six. This time it's Harrington off the right side, tries to make a man miss, fighting for extra yards. Harris and Romanick. Darius Romanek, first time we've called his name tonight on the tackle, bringing up third down. You saw 14 Antonio Fletcher in there too. Again, they went to the 3-3-5 look last year, so three safety bodies on the field. Those second level defenders have to be huge against this rushing attack. You're not accounted for by the offensive line originally. This the 17th play of the drive. Slobber, knocker. Fake, end zone, touchdown. Mike Evans from Zach Thomas and the Mountaineers three for three on offense tonight. And again, you get so used to Evans, 85, Crosby, all these guys mucking it up as blockers, lead backs on these run plays. And so you see him coming towards you as a linebacker, as a safety, and you're thinking, I'm getting blocked first slips right past him. Zach Thomas, 9 of 11, 108 yards, two touchdowns. And after the Chandler State an extra point, it is 21-0. We thought Appalachian State might be a touch rusty. We're not too proud to say we were wrong. 21-7, second quarter. Two semifinals, New Year's Day. The college football playoff lives on ESPN. Four of the Power Five return to play this weekend with the Big Ten. That drive for Appalachian State, 17 plays, 10 runs, seven passes, eight players touch the ball. I call that Mike Golick Jr. efficient. Spreading the love and getting it done down near the goal line with some big bodies moving folks out of the way and using the threat, the options they've got in this offense. I don't always believe play action passing is about establishing the run per se, but it's about establishing a threat. It's about establishing optionality. And with this tight end group, as a defensive back, as a linebacker, you've always got to be thinking, am I getting blocked or am I getting a route run my way? And you're never quite sure. Paul and Perry deep to receive the state and kick. It's going to be Paul. And his own four yard line, Rashad Paul up the middle. Walk us through that touchdown and how it happened, Jimmy. We saw a tackle over here, so you're gonna see 73, the left tackle, Cole Garrison lined up on the right side and both tight ends backside. And so now the defense is trying to communicate for the motion, trying to communicate the tackle over. And you see number 14, the safety, Antonio Fletcher, biting up on that play action fake. And Mike Evans just slides in right behind him, using all of that, moving the tackle, the motion before the play to keep confusing this young secondary. Lane Hatcher in for his second drive. Red Wolf scored on his first one, and Hatcher's going to go deep immediately, and it is caught by Jonathan Adams, and a great tackle, or Adams is gone for six. So a big play for Hatcher, 39 yards. And no safety help in the middle of the field here. That safety eyes on the tight end in the flat. And so Adams is able to go right by him, bend towards the middle of the field and use that big body to shield. So already in App State territory, a quick, they're gonna be a double throw into triple coverage. 
and it is intercepted. DeMarco Jackson comes up with the pick. A double throw from Hatcher. And I believe it was Jeff Foreman, number 13, who threw the pass that ultimately got picked off for Arkansas State. One of the difficulties of putting a play in like this is, is no joke, as a player, you're excited to run it. So Foreman's got the opportunity to throw it. He cuts it loose, but this is also a personnel issue. You're running this for a tight end in Reed Tyler. This isn't a guy that's gonna peel the top off of a defense so everyone else has time to catch up to him on the route because this isn't Dahu Green running this route. This isn't Jonathan Adams running this route. A tight end body doing that, three bodies there. Is that a turnover chair or is he just taking a seat? I think he might just be tired. Which, okay. I mean, I'm sitting down right now, so I can empathize. Who among us? Not a little worn out this year. So Foreman on the sideline talking about the throw. Here comes Zach Thomas. He's going to put one deep, and that's going to be picked off. What an interception by Antonio Fletcher. Anything you can do, I'm going to do better. Arkansas State ball. And we see these deep crossing routes all the time. Think Lincoln Riley in Oklahoma on this. Getting them coming all the way from the back side. And Fletcher just doing an outstanding job of tracking this ball in the air. Again, you're going to see 13. Christian Horn coming across the stream. 14 reads the quarterback's eyes. This ball's underthrown. He puts a foot in the ground, makes an unbelievably acrobatic catch, holds it to his body, and completes it all the way. I've done it every week. I've called a game. I've helped our fine folks out in screening for top plays on SportsCenter. That should be on top plays on SportsCenter. You get to chain a belt and all kinds of fun. Is Logan Bonner back to Adams? So it was as if the interception for Hatcher never happened because now Arkansas State has the ball near where they had it before, now inside the 30 at a first down. And you see a lot of action going Jonathan Adams' way right now. The Dahu Green Sirens going off in everybody's head. Lincoln Perry off the left side, good patience, but then immediately brought down trying to squeak out of there. That's number 15, TD Roof. So you've gotten a reprieve as the Arkansas State offense. You've got to come away with points down here, and you know field goals aren't going to do it. This is four down territory again for them. And there was a chance App State gets a touchdown there, 28-7. This thing gets out of hand. Nonetheless, here comes Bonner and Arkansas State able to get the turnover. Bonner's going to have some room to keep it himself. He's not going to slide. He's like, I can play for Appalachian State. Lower the shoulder, first down, nice gain of 17. Ball at the 10. Logan Bonner reminds me a lot of my former teammate and current Notre Dame offensive coordinator, Tommy yeah. Reese. He's not going to blow you away looking like an athlete, moving like an athlete, but makes the smart play when it's there, and that time, plenty of room. Well, Tommy Reese calling ball plays for the Irish. Bonner swings it out to Lincoln Perry, and Lincoln Perry to the pylon. Wait for the signal. Spot him out. I don't know, Mike Golick Jr. I think we've got... Let's have a look. Jim. Oh, I think he scored. He's, so he's got the ball in the outside hand, which is worth noting here because you're going to see his leg hit that pylon. And so we just have to see if that ball is back behind his body when that leg hits or if they're even going to take a look at yeah, it. Yeah, they don't care. They're going to be right back to Perry. And a loss on the play. You saw on that play them taking advantage of tempo. They'll mix that in from time to time like we've seen, but also use the snap count. They used it to their advantage going on double counts last week against Georgia State. You can get a look at this Appalachian State defense as well who wants to move around up front, twist and stunt. But down here, they've got their closer in, Jamal Jones, expecting another power run look here on second and goal. He scored the only touchdown for Arkansas State to this point. 8-13 and counting in the second quarter, and it's a keeper for Bonner. Bonner able to shake the defender and then falls down at a tackle for loss on the play number 10, Tim Frizzell. All right, you've got third and goal here. This is another spot. You have not been running it well all night. We've seen them get big personnel on here, multiple tight ends on the field. 
and use that run sell to give them an opportunity to throw out to one of their wide receivers. I got my eye on Dahu Green here at the bottom of the screen. They like the tight ends as well. Giles Amos, Reed Tyler, two players they look at quite a bit. We'll see what Bonner does. Third down, can't find anybody. Has to gather himself. Bonner to the end zone, nearly intercepted on the play by Sean Jolly. And Bonner down on the field. He takes an absolute shot at the end of this play. You hate to see a guy down. One of the receiver downfield, offense. Penalties declined. Fourth down. And a flag to boot. Penalty declined. Fourth down. Again, the story here, though, Logan Botter. We have another look at the hit here. After the pass fell incomplete. It ends up being sort of a double whammy here. You get land on, but the pressure applied by number nine, Demetrius Taylor. Slippery, slippery senior out of Miami Northwestern in Florida. Does a great job staying with his rush and getting after the quarterback there and uses the hands. You didn't see any helmet contact there, so we're not going to worry about targeting or anything. We've seen plenty of that in this young college football season as they tend to Bonner now. Who And a low push at that. It wasn't anything hands to the face, anything up high. Stayed away from the head or neck area. and Good to see Bonner getting up now. Maybe just a win knocked out of him situation. But I, Bill Jr., I, I want to point this out. Since they rushed for the play that was not reviewed from Lincoln Perry, we've had a no gain, a loss, and an incomplete. Shocked there wasn't more of a push for that review in that spot. You worked so hard to get Lincoln the Perry in those number 79, reviews. offense, ineligible receiver downfield. Penalty is declined. You worked so hard to get him those pass catching opportunities out of the backfield. You took advantage of tempo. You're down 14 right now. Points are going to be at a premium. Three's not going to do it in this outing. All right, so Blake Groupie on to kick the field goal. Timeout. Arkansas State. I wonder Second if Blake timeout. knows that Blake Anderson knows that field goals may not get it done, and they'll talk it over. Let's take a look at this week's college football AP rankings brought to you by Allstate. It seems if we've been talking about the Big Ten of the rankings forever, alas, we get to see them play. Actually started tomorrow night with Wisconsin in action. But you've got Ohio State, fifth-ranked team in the country, noted by most as is the best team in the conference, perhaps looking at a playoff at a Big Ten championship. Georgia didn't fall much after Alabama. We expect both of them to perhaps meet again in the SEC championship, barring something wonky happening with Florida, who, by the way, the next two games postponed. They had LSU postponed last week, Missouri this week. Uh, still a lot of football to be played. My heart skipped a beat. Notre Dame's got the pit super weapon this week. Mm. They're going to need to do more than 12 points against Louisville, though, if they're going to mess with Clemson. Groupie on for the field goal attempt, and it is no good. So in a game where a field goal may not have gotten it done, Groupie misses left, still 21-7, Appalachian State. All right, I want to have a look now at this Lincoln Perry gain of 11 and whether or not he was in the end zone whether or not the ball crossed the plane and this is the issue is the ball's in his outside arm this is why you see running backs quarterbacks always put it on that inside because now the official looking at it sees the leg hit the pylon which means he's out of bounds and that arm on the outside back behind him a little bit there so he was called out of bounds arkansas state went tempo didn't give it an opportunity to get reviewed they went loss of down incomplete pass missed field goal and here appalachian state taking advantage and it's marcus williams fumbles the ball after the big gain and how about this another turnover and booker ficklin comes up with it for the red bulls 
This is like a video game lined up from number 10, Ellery Alexander here, the safety here. Doing a great job staying with the play, sees it all the way, winds up, punches straight through. That's something you drill in practice all the time as a defense, Matt. Defensive coaches telling second guy in, go there for it. He sees a breakaway and a loose ball carrier and says, no, I've got this opportunity first man to the scene. That was a gain of 41 in the second consecutive play that App State's turned the ball over. But you hit it on the head. That's a drill you see at every single practice at every level across the country. And it just worked for Arkansas State as it's Lane Hatcher's series for the Red Wolves. And that's Ryan Graham, the ball carrier. But Williams Jr. had open field. And we have an injured player on the play, number 52. That's DeMarco Jackson down for the Mountaineers. That's your top returning tackler from 2019, second on the team this year. And looks like he just needs a minute there, jogging off right now. Gotta give a lot of credit to Arkansas State. There have been a couple of times after the first turnover that Appalachian State could have scored and made it 28-7. Red Wolves miss a field goal. Big gain out of Appalachian State. Arkansas State forces another turnover. They're doing what they can in this second quarter to stay in this game. Arkansas State's offense got to pay them off now for it. Deep towards the middle of the field with Dahu Green. It worked for you early and you haven't been back since. But that was a gain of three, second and seven. Hatcher, no time, steps up into the pocket. And met immediately by the Appalachian State front. Tackled on the play by Big Jordan Earl. And that was all thanks to Elijah Dirasuba on the pressure. Left guard Ivory Scott just had his feet caught in stone there. So third and seven again. Hatcher going to be forced to run, and he falls short of the first down marker. Looked as if there was a late flag on the play. So no flag, fourth and three. That's a long two. I agree with the decision to punt here. What I'm a little shaken about is the effort from Lane Hatcher on the end of that run. We talked so much about Zach Thomas on the other side never sliding. You had a chance for the first down right there to go and get it. And the rest of your team saw you pull up short on that. you got to set the tone. Part of it is a quarterback. And they're going to fake it. The pitch falls to the turf, and that was a fake punt going nowhere. Tristan Walliser and a host of Appalachian State defenders, a great job sniffing that out. Rashad Paul ended up falling on it. And at that point, if they're gonna call a fake punt, Watch number 48 right here, Tristan Walliser at the top side, disrupts the timing on all this. That pitch is supposed to go to Rashad Paul, but because he gets in the backfield, disrupts that timing early. Now all of a sudden, the pitch player is wondering what to do. And you go ahead and celebrate, son. Hell of a play. So quick change opportunity for the Mountaineers, and at this point, you'd probably expect them to take a shot. It's time. And why not a runoff tackle? That Harrington for a loss of two on the play. It's been a real back and forth battle. That's as good as a turnover right there on that play, a turnover on downs. App State Malik Williams, you talk about wanting to give him the ball a lot more. And now you've got three up to the top, him inside, probably going to get a matchup with the safety on this play. Look for him streaking down the middle of the field. But a quick shot falls incomplete to Malik Williams. And you really, look, you can't ask for much more, at least in the last few possessions than the Arkansas State defense, what they've been able to do to turn the ball over, get the offense back the ball. And right now, both quarterbacks, Hatcher and Bonner, struggling to get the points on the board. And we see this from Zach Thomas from time to time. Again, very polished, but that ball will die on him at certain points. They're trying to place it too much instead of cutting it loose. 
Third and 11 here, quiet night. Thomas Hennigan, number five. They're motioning out the other way. Come back to five in the slot. That ball thrown downfield again intended for Williams, incomplete. And hit hard on the play. Williams slow to get up. So again, a good job by the Arkansas State defense. Minimal damage, field goal attempts coming on. Both of these teams need a deep breath on the sideline right now. The pace has been frenetic. Got to get back to your bread and butter, hopefully after a make if you're App State. Chandler Staten, 39-yard attempt. And Staten tacks on the three to make it 24-7 Appalachian State. You're right, pace has been frenetic. Right now, all Mountaineers in the second quarter. Smith on the call, what's different week for Logan Bonner, Lane Hatcher, 529 yards, seven touchdowns. Tonight combined, 170 yards, zero touchdowns, zero interceptions, no real rhythm to speak of. We gave you the big video game treatment at the top of the show. This was when you had to take the cartridge out of the Nintendo machine and blow in it. That copper's a little warm right yeah, now. Yeah, to cool get it, it back in there. You had to get it back into the Nintendo system to get it working. So he was blowing on the cartridge there on the sideline. See if Arkansas State and the Red Wolves can't get that offense going. Now 24-7. Nice return past the 26-yard line. Let's set it to the studio and the hardworking Kevin Connors. And Matt, coming up on the Dr. Pepper Halftime Report, Joey Galloway, Trevor Maddich will join me, talk about the return of Big Ten football, who's the secret weapon at Ohio State, plus is the conference really a lock to make the college football playoff? The answer may surprise you. Plus, the guys will have their upset picks for Saturday. All coming up, Matt, when you join us on the Dr. Pepper Halftime Report. Kevin Connors, thank you. Tell you what, no one works harder in this building than the Raps crews. Stephen Oling, Mike Diesenhoff, Connors, Barry, Gallo well, Galloway doesn't travel. Palmer has Thursday nights off, so I digress. Logan Bonner pressured, sack, brought down by big Demetrius Taylor. He gets Jarrett Horace, number 79, the left tackle on an island, and the quick hand swipe, the arm over, and that running back is not going to stop that big man. Very slippery for a guy who's listed at 6'1", 295, short and stout. He's incredibly fluid and just often finds himself in the backfield. I, it, it's remarkable. 13 tackles for loss in 2019. Three sacks already tonight for App State. Second and 22, Arkansas State, just the one timeout. Bonner again to throw, and a quick shot over the middle to Jones, who picks up a decent chunk of yardage for 11. You know, the defensive coaches with Taylor, they said he's hard to block and gets incredible leverage for a guy his size. Had two block kicks last year. Leverage, the key in that situation. Again, not the tallest guy, but when you can get up and under. And now, you've got a third and 11 here. You've been backed up all night, 0 for on third down so far. Got to start to mix it up here. Maybe mix in a screen at some point. I just like that he's a single digit up front. Quick look, flag down, incomplete. Intended for Rashad Paul. Might get him for the horse collar on that play. Coming over the top. Shot block, offense. Number 70 and 67. That foul is declined. Fourth down. It's the right call, and it only happened because you've got your center trying to get out for a screen. The left guard cutting on a screen like that where you've got bodies going ill-advised more often than not in that spot. As you see Ethan Miner, the center, trying to explain that to his coach. He was just trying to clear space. His buddy, the left guard, is on the ground, and now you're backed up and punting. Thomas Hennigan deep to receive the punt of Ryan Hansen, and Appalachian State's going to get the ball with two timeouts and just under three minutes in the first half.
Hennigan get a fair catch at 37-yard line this week. Sunday NFL countdown before Derrick Henry tries to run through the undefeated Steel Curtain defense inside the art of the stiff arm, which, by the way, he does probably better than anyone in the NFL. That's 10 a.m. Eastern ESPN and the ESPN app. And then week seven, Monday night football matchup. Oh, I love defense. Aaron Donald. Yeah. And the Bears, Khalil Mack. Come on. 8 p.m. Eastern, ESPN, ESPN, the Portes, and the ESPN app. Defensive tackles aren't supposed to have abs, Matt. It's not the way it was supposed to be. Harrington off the left side avoids a couple of tacklers, and he's going to get a gain of 13. Appalachian State can run the ball because they've got a the couple timeouts. Clock stops and they move the chains. Two minute drills interesting for them is they won't deviate from their normal offense. They understand defense is going to be playing back off, and there's a lot of easy yardage in the run game. And they're still well above three, two minutes now. Ball at the 50 yard line. Everything is a green light go for their offense right now. So just in Arkansas State territory, another give to Harrington, and another nice cut. Right up just short of another first down gain of nine. And now you start running it out of the shotgun a little bit here, and you set up for some interesting wrinkles here. Read option looks. Certainly Zach Thomas is a run threat, but also you'll get some speed options from these guys. If Arkansas State wants to heat it up off the edge, challenge some of that run game, they've got an option to answer. And Thomas going to keep it brought down for a loss. Ellery Alexander. And that's one of the ways that you can blow up that read option, bring two off that backside there. Blitz the best point for the quarterback as he's trying to make that decision. Loss of four, third and five. Bunch to the left side here, maybe a screen to Thomas Hennigan, number five. Treat it like a run in a situation where you know you're in four down territory. Thomas steps up into the pocket. And there it is, lowers his shoulder, first down, Appalachian State. That's what we talked about. Remember when Lane Hatcher, I said, came up short of the first down? All eyes are on you when you're playing quarterback, and everyone just saw at the end of this play, if you're Zach Thomas, everything this program is about under Sean Clark. Lowers the shoulder, takes him out of bounds, and lets him hear about it after. You're going up to the line of scrimmage as an offensive lineman now, 10 foot tall and bulletproof, ready to fight for that guy. Jarius Romanick took the shoulder. Again, the full playbook open with the timeout. That's Harrington, who went over 100 yards on the prior carry, and he's met for no game. And they might want to give Daytrick Harrington a seat on that one because reaching for the reaching for extra yardage at that point, the ball got punched out and went out of bounds. He's got to be careful with the football. No reason to be doing that right now with two timeouts, plenty of time, great field position, manageable down in distance. He's a guy that's been playing good football for them. Got to know better, got to reinforce that on the sidelines as they give him a breather. Uh, they're going to give him a gain of one for the night. Harrington, 10 carries, 107 yards, and the touchdown. Thomas, plenty of time to the left, and a wide open receiver knocked out of bounds. That's Malik Williams. And Mike Golick Jr., this is when you see the leadership of a senior quarterback and a fifth year senior quarterback at that. They've yet to use one timeout. They're in the two minute offense, and there's zero panic for this App State offense. Understands when he can run, buys time, and has great protection from his group up front, and just wait patiently for that mesh route across the middle to yield a wide open receiver. Be the easiest call the officials have all night. Snap infraction. Offense, number 60. Five yard penalty. Replay. First down. That's Noah Hannon in his 43rd straight start. 2019 Sunbelt first teamer. And part of that group up front, 129 career starts coming into this game. He's a guy, we talked to Sean Clark, embodies this program. Said if he was three inches taller, he's an SEC caliber player. But at 6'1, 270, he's the kind of development player this program loves to stack weight on and let go to work. Very honest about this being a developmental program. Thomas to the end zone. What a strike to Malik Williams and another touchdown for Appalachian State. 16-yarder to Williams. 
You see three receivers to the right-hand side. And all the eyes, linebackers in the corner on the outside, get bought up by the hitches. And so you get that corner run from the inside by Malik Williams. Smooth route against the safety. Quarterback does a great job putting out there. Malik Williams, man, is smooth and fun to watch on tape. Can do a lot for this App State team. Nickname is Spider-Man. Because he goes up, climbs up, and catches everything. And Williams tonight, five catches, 62 yards, and that touchdown. And it is all Mountaineers. You see those two hitches right there, and everyone's eyes are on those guys underneath because they've been getting nickel and dimed by these guys. And so you see six right out there, ready to celebrate already. Cameron Peoples knows what time it is when Malik Williams is going towards that pylon. And the toughness, again, from Zach Thomas that set the tone on that drive gave them that finish mentality that Sean Clark wants this program to be about once they cross the 50. That's as cool as you're going to see a quarterback in a two-minute situation before the half. They didn't use one of their timeouts. And back in the first quarter, it was 7-7, to 24 unanswered points out of Appalachian State. Played their first game. They beat Charlotte, lost to Marshall. Beat Campbell 52-21, but this is their first conference game. Is Louisiana that was postponed? Georgia State also postponed to the seventh and uh, on the seventh and fourteenth respectively, and so 26 days off. And again, if you were waiting for any rust, we sure haven't seen it. Boone, North Carolina tonight. State and get a pooch kick that. And so one timeout, just a minute, a little over a minute left for Lane Hatcher. See if he can't put anything on the board. And at this point here, number nine, Demetrius Taylor has been giving you trouble on those edges, so make sure your running backs are aware. I'd send them on chips coming out of the backfield to help your tackles, but you want to get them involved. If you're Lane Hatcher, there's still time to work. And we know this offense, with the double moves they've got with a guy like Jonathan Adams, who's so adept at going up and getting it in traffic, this half is far from over. Hatcher, quick throw on first down to Reed. Tyler, short gain of two. And I understand you're trying to get back into a rhythm here, but rhythm for this offense is saying, hey, four, hey, nine, go yep. up and get it. You've got to give one of those guys a try before the end of the half. And Jonathan Adams is over 100 yards in the first half, but no score. Hatcher forced to throw up his back foot again, intended for Tyler, falls incomplete, flag on the play. Looks like 78's going to get hit with a hold. Holding, offense, number 67. 10-yard penalty, replay, second down. And it's Ethan Miner. Having a rough couple of series as Miner. Front four right now getting after it for App State. You're seeing stunts up front. They're not adding rushers in this situation. And when Demetrius Taylor gets to kick down inside in this sort of NASCAR package for them as a three technique, you watch him on the games as a penetrator. He's a lot for a guard to handle. So second and 18 after the penalty. Hatcher nearly intercepted. Ball tipped by Brandon Bowling. And Sean Jolly almost came up with a gift. I tell you what, if you're App State, you've been moving the ball, you got them pinned deep, and you got two timeouts right now. Yeah, you said at the start of this drive, this half hit over, but that was meant for Arkansas State. You can bet they're going to use one of those timeouts here, depending on what happens on third and long. And they're just going to give the ball to Jamal Jones. Jones able to get outside. So Appalachian State, see if they use one of those timeouts, and they do. I went out of bounds at that spot, tackled out of bounds, so the clock's going to stop for them there. I thought you're right, out of bounds for Jamal Jones. Probably not the wisest decision for the running back. All right, so fourth and 11. And Matt, you look at all night tonight. We talked about the rust for App State in this, but it's been Arkansas State with the miscues, the missed field goal, turnovers, the failed execution on the fake punt. 
All right, so Ryan Hansen's punt, fair catch. And I'll tell you, Zach Thomas, two timeouts, 35-yard line, not a long field. They're going to have an opportunity to go. Just so in command of this offense. It's what you expect from a fifth-year senior, a guy who was the 2018 Sunbelt Offensive Player of the Year, managing all of the movement, understanding who's going to be open, and spreading the ball around to all of these weapons, capping it off on the great touchdown drive to Malik Williams in what was a three-minute drill there. They'll now get their true chance. Another one of those situations, 35-yard line, 36 seconds, and two timeouts. They got a couple of shots early to see if they have something before the half's over. Zach, we get it. Our apologies. We'll create your video game at halftime. Cameron Peoples, minimal gain on first down. I'm surprised by this, so Matt. I. Not going to use the timeout here. Not a ton of sense of urgency, pretty content to go into the half. I thought for sure they'd give him one shot, especially with 14, as hot as he is. Yeah, at this point, you've done what you wanted. 360 yards to 179, 24 unanswered points. And you are right, Sean Clark is going to take this to the half as Peoples just off the left side. And that'll do it. For the first half, Appalachian State and Arkansas State in this Sun Belt matchup. Up 31-7 of the Mountaineers. Out of the studio, Kevin Connors, Joey Galloway, and Trevor Mattish. All right, Matt. That's a game I want to play. ESPN Thursday Night Football. Go with Junior Matt Barry. Marty Smith on the call. Sun Belt just fun for one team tonight. Appalachian State up on Arkansas State's. 31 to 7, Michael Ola Jr., Matt Berry, uh, back with you, back down to Marty Smith in just a couple of minutes. But when we came to the top of this broadcast, we said the one thing that was historic for Appalachian State coming in, Golick Jr., 26 day layoff in between games, longest in program history. We thought maybe there'd be a little bit of rust, but all we've seen out of them is dominance. One team couldn't have come in hotter in Arkansas State after those video game numbers last Thursday, and you're right, 17 days off the practice field during that 26 day layoff. And all App State has come out and done is leaned on its leadership. Zach Thomas, the fifth-year seniors up front on that offensive line, all making this possible, a seamless transition back to game speed. And as you would expect, good football for Appalachian State is the story as we take a look at your game flow brought to you by Progressive. And look, Zach Thomas, fifth-year senior quarterback, 12 of 17, 158 yards, Three touchdowns, that the opening one to Christian Wells, and as you say and like to say, pass to set up the run. It's football in 2020, and even Appalachian State, a program defined by that run game up front, knows it's got the athletes to get the ball downfield to make life easier, and it's got a quarterback that's willing to set the tone and use his legs. Zach Thomas has been polished all night. Again, he's never going to wow you with the arm strength. He's going to have some balls die in the dirt. But you see the disparity there on the other side. Arkansas State, a complete inability to set up their run game tonight. So the total yards for Appalachian State in the first half, 364 to 179. And it just hasn't been what we've seen out of Lane Hatcher and Logan Bonner, especially last week against Georgia State. But look, there's a half a football to play, and if there's one thing we learned in that 59-52 shootout a week ago, is that in this league and in this conference, anything is possible. As Elliot Nimrod gets set to kick, but the first thing's first for the Arkansas State defense, stop the Appalachian State offense. Let's check in with Marty Smith. Matty, when the second quarter was all Appalachian State, I wondered what Blake Anderson might have said to his team at halftime. He said, it's pretty simple, Marty. I just told him, the scoreboard, as far as you know, is zero to zero. Go win the third quarter. We'll worry about the fourth quarter when we get to it. Play to your coaching, not to the scoreboard. Go win the third quarter. And you know if you're that Arkansas State defense, you've been doing everything in your power to keep this team in the game. Keep going out there. Your new coordinator talked about Triple E, effort, execution, expect to win. Those first two E's have to set the tone for you. Well, here's the first play of the second half. Zach Thomas over the middle, intended for Malik Williams, falls incomplete. And that's it. When you're a head coach and you're down by this much in the second half, 
It's gonna be one, it sounds so cliche, but it's one play at a time, one possession at a time, one quarter time, because we know they can score. And if you're App State on the other side right now, you're looking for a kill shot on this drive here. Take any wind left in their sails completely out of it. A blitz on the play, and how about that? What a great blitz call tackled on the play by Ellery Alexander. Not only did he get back there untouched, he finished the play. Unbelievable timing there. And I'm surprised App State hasn't made more use of the snap count at home right here. You've got a defense that's shown it wants to come downhill and heat you up right now. You've got a veteran quarterback in a line. Why not mix it up and go on two? So third and 12 in movement, flag, free play for Thomas up top and knocked away. Kenneth Harris on the coverage, but it'll be movement on the Arkansas State defense. Offside defense, number 42, five-yard penalty. We play third down. Excellent mic presence by our official. 42 by Dell Scott, the guilty party. And we just mentioned, mix up the cadence there. Use that as a weapon for you to get to a much more manageable third down and seven. Let's see Christian Wells. They started off the party with 16 in this game. He's so now we on the field. Third and seven. Can the Red Wolves get off the field? First possession, second half. And the answer is yes. Pass falls incomplete. Intended for Deshaun Davis. So mission one, Red Wolves defense, get off the field. Great execution even in the face of the penalty and that back end setting the tone right now. Everything covered on that third down. Your safety's able to time that blitz. And now you give your offense a chance with favorable field position. They've got to respond as we've got a player down right now. Kenneth Harris, number three, the true freshman defensive back that this coaching staff could not have been higher on. They said he's got a really high ceiling. Nick Paremski, their new defensive coordinator, who's been working with the DBs all season, said they expect a lot out of him. Incredible ability from the freshman. He's part of that young back end that they've talked about throughout this season. Injuries, COVID, et cetera, forced them to make some adjustments, get some guys in there that perhaps they, they wouldn't normally consider playing. But again, a true freshman they're high on. Uh, made the switch that 3-3-5 scheme a year ago uh, and now continuing that scheme with Perevsky, somebody who understands, the, the new defensive coordinator, understands those guys' safeties coaches before elevated the defensive coordinator. And that's a scheme we see all over college football now. Iowa State and Matt Campbell's outfit certainly made it popular, but Baylor running it last year. Even saw Notre Dame with some three safety looks with the personnel that they had taking use of those bodies as the offenses get more up tempo, want to move faster and spread things out more to help you be scheme versatile and be able to fit up some of these runs when they want to hit them in these spread offenses. Again, Coach Duggan, defensive coordinator, let go after last week's loss to Georgia State. Blake Anderson talked about what a tough decision it was for him because the friendship he and Duggan had, especially with what Coach Anderson dealt with with the loss of his wife last season. But now it's Perebski's defense as they get off the field, forcing the punt. That's going to be Rashad Paul, who does not fair catch it, and brought back to the 25-yard line. So miscues for Arkansas State in the first half dug them a big hole. The failed trickeration right here again, trying to throw a deep developing toss pass to the tight end, a missed field goal after an exchange of turnovers, a volley there. And then again, another trick play, this time on special teams, missed time on the attempt at the fake punt. And it's been that kind of night again, everything going right for them last week. But App State on defense has been playing off, taking things away, really mugging up number four, Dahu Green who was explosive last outing. So Bonner gets the start of the second half to give to Jones off the left side for no game. And it really went sideways for Arkansas State when they missed the field goal. At that point, it was 21-7. Could have been 21-10, stayed in it, and then 
they did what they could to stay in it and have to stay able to score. We talked so much leading up to that, coming off a turnover, that Lincoln Perry borderline touchdown that wasn't near the goal line. Speaking of Perry, he's in the backfield with Bonner, the fake to Perry. Bonner, a quick throw, pulls it out. And a nice catch by Jonathan Adams, who goes up to get it. Comes up a little bit sore. Jonathan Adams looking worn down. He's been going up against Shamar Jean Charles, one of his great defensive backs, and gets his legs taken out underneath there. But him going up and high pointing the ball has been about the most consistent play for this offense. Five receptions for a buck 20 on the night for him. But Dahu Green on the other side, a complete no-show so far. Yeah, Adams still getting the numbers, spoke to him this week. He was excited to play the game as Bonner looks deep. No one home intended for Adams, second down. And so for this App State defense, you want to continue to eliminate the big play here. We've seen as confident as they are in Sean Jolly, who's a preseason Walter Camp first team All-American. Shamar Jean Charles, who right now the FBS co-leader in pass breakups, coming into tonight through three games. Bonner look right, keeps it himself on the designed run. Picks up five. And that's going to create opportunities. They're trying to buy an extra hat in there because they're getting outmanned at the line of scrimmage. App State's putting more than they can block in there on some of these run looks. And so you try and buy an extra blocker using the quarterback in the run game. But now third down and five. Logan Bonner's not going to get you that five with his legs. And I know sack yards and lost yards taken into account. That now puts Arkansas State for one yard rushing on the game. And a good throw there to Corey Rucker. And Arkansas State gets to move the chains. Singled up at the bottom of the field. Got an ISO with a press receiver. This is another one. Blake Anderson singled out. Another freshman on this team said he's got a bright future. Ball just shy of the 50. Bonner again to throw. Has to step up. And a good job avoiding the rush. And Logan Bonner, a couple of nice runs consecutively when he keeps it. Gain of nine. So if you've got the App State defense worried about your receivers on the outside, they've done a great job shutting them off. And your offensive line is not able to muck it up in traffic there when you've got a tight end attack. You see this spread now. They had twins out there before. Why not run it out of the gun in that? And they're going to move the chains, give them the 10-yard. So first down and 10 for Arkansas State. Bonner to throw deep. Attended for Green, had the coverage and look that he wanted, but overthrew his receiver incomplete. Timing's just been off there all night because, again, he's got the inside leverage on this play. No safety help. You see the head fake to the outside. And if he puts that ball on him, he's got a chance. We saw Dahu Green make some of his own impressive catches under duress last week. Now here again, keep an eye on multiple tight ends, but a lot of space for Jonathan Adams on that backside. That ball could come out quick. And I would anticipate going forward, it's going to be a four-down game for Arkansas State. You called it a good look over there. Rashad Paul, the receiver, bringing up third and short, gain of six. And again, this is one where I'm either spreading it out if you're going to run the ball in this situation, or looking for my tight end maybe in the flat, number 87, Tyler Reed, who's been active for you. The gain of eight, my mistake, third and two. And that's Bonner, a quick pop over the middle, caught by number 85, Giles Amos, and a little bit of a drive going here for the Red Wolves, their first possession of the second half. It's great complimentary football, your defense gets you a big stop on the opening drive of the half, you flip field position, you substitute so the defense has time to match. You're backing them off. You're looking for that one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside. So Bonner again to throw deep to the end zone. And just off the hands of Adams, flag on the play.
pass interference. Defense, number eight, 15-yard penalty, first down. Gene Charles, the guilty party. And here's that one-on-one -on -one look, the safety adding late, and a lot of grabbing and holding there by Shamar Gene Charles. Sees the hands going up and responds accordingly. You know, things haven't gone too well for Arkansas State, but you could say Jonathan Adams Jr. winning that matchup with Gene Charles tonight. Five catches, 120 yards, Bonner to the end zone again. Incomplete. I think Bonner thought he had a free play on that line. It looked like a little bit of a weird timing on the snap, like they thought somebody jumped. Got one off over the top. Just got word they're bringing the cart out for Kenneth Harris right now. Left foot injury is what we're being told. We'll take him back to get his x-rays. We'll keep Marty Smith on that. Bonner, fake, ball tipped. And maybe a mistake to catch that one by Jamal Jones. Boy, Demetrius Taylor, active, disruptive. It's never going to be pretty, and now it sets up a big third down. You've come all this way. I'm putting him out as far away as you see right there, as far away as you possibly can. See if you can get one of these receivers isoed up. Dahu Green's been covered all night. But third and 16, you've got to give yourself close enough for a fourth down attempt. So that catch, a loss of six. Trying to make it fourth and manageable here for Arkansas State after the defensive stop. Bonner climbs the pocket, looks to the end zone, and it's tipped by DeMarco Jackson, falling incomplete, intended on the play for Corey Rucker. Get down here, the windows start to tighten up. Three-man rush, so you've got eight bodies on that back end, all tracking the quarterback's eyes. Brendan Harrington able to get a hand on it as well. So they're going to try it out the field goal kicker. Blake Groupie missed one in the first half, trying to get any points. And Groupie able to knock the 34-yard attempts through. So points for Arkansas State as they try to claw back into this one, 31-10, third quarter. Junior Marty Smith back with the 31 to 10 Appalachian State. Big game in the Sun Belt for both of these teams. Logan Bonner able to lead his unit down there to get the field goal. Now down 21. Look, we've seen crazier things happen in this conference, especially last week when Arkansas State was able to outlast Georgia State in a 59-52 game. So Elliot Nimrod set the kick. An onside kick goes the 10 yards. That ball's still loose. And here comes the mutual pointing. A tradition unlike any other. We all got it. And it looks as if Arkansas State recovers the onside kick. What a call by Blake Anderson to infuse a little more energy into this comeback here with 9.36 left in the third. Well, I think what he saw from his offense on that last drive, again, the offense and defense playing complimentary football, you flip field position, you say, let's get special teams involved. And great execution on the chip right here. Goes the 10 yards, and then it's a free-for-all. Now you're at the bottom of the pile where Things are said. I don't want to talk about what goes on at the bottom of that pile, Matt. It's not pretty. Stuff is kicked. No one's proud of it. People but if you are walk, pinched. But if you walk out the other side with that ball for your team in this offense, everything changes. How about that for a quick change? Now Lane Hatcher's turn to see if he can dial one up. And Hatcher immediately sacked. And it's our guy, Demetrius Taylor. And, and this is inexcusable. You've got seven in to block four right now. And one player, he's matched up against the tight end in the back, which is the unfortunate byproduct of slide protection. I hate seeing tight ends in protection matched up against premier rushers. But you've got two guys to help there. It's got to be better than that. Got the fourth sack on the night. 
And again, scouting report on Taylor, hard to block. Saw it there. Hatcher to throw again. Can't find anybody. And again, Hatcher brought down. Sean Jolly coming from his corner position to bring down Hatcher. And Sean Jolly gets there late, but you're going to watch DeMarco Jackson start this off, and then you get a back on a backer. You do these blitzes up front to get a guy like number seven, Trey Cobb. Even as much as they tout Jamal Jones as a running back for his pass protection, still getting pushed into the quarterback's lap there when you've got a six foot two, 215 pound linebacker like Cobb barreling downhill. George Blackstock also providing the pressure. Hatcher to step up and throw, has bowling over the middle. And that is a great response from the Appalachian State defense after the onside kick. And you have to thank Arkansas State will bring out the punting unit. They're going to pin him back here. Matt, at this point, Arkansas State's completely one-dimensional. Again, I know it's not adjusted for sack yardage, but you're sitting at negative one yards rushing tonight. Just an inability to execute in that portion of the game. Makes life easy to just pin your ears back and go if you're App State. And Ryan Hansen's punt, a fair catch there at the 22-yard line. So credit App State. Onside kick recovered. Red Wolves couldn't do anything with it. 31-10 in the third. Appalachian State. Not I like saying about my boy Marta Smith is he's a beautiful crazy. <laughs> Oh, you're a peach, young man. You're a peach. Uh, Appalachian State's two most famous former undergraduates are the two most successful artists in all of country music right now, Eric Church and Luke Combs. Well, I called Luke yesterday, and I asked him about that Michigan upset that somehow we haven't, I don't even think we've mentioned yet during a broadcast until now. Well, Luke was a senior in high school, and later that year, he was in attendance in Chattanooga when the Mountaineers beat Joe Flacco and the Delaware Blue Hens for the FCS national title. Well, Luke said he and the boys got a little bit overzealous and rushed the field prematurely. And while they were there on the sidewalk well, sideline, Delaware returned a kickoff for a touchdown, and it was total pandemonium on the app sideline. I feel certain Coach Moore was thoroughly impressed. And speaking of impressed, Luke shotgunned a cold beer last night while performing with Brooks and Dunn and I've never been more jealous in my life. Red dirt road out there for Marty Smith. And look at Luke. That is a beauty right there. You saw in the younger days, much like myself, exactly why you grow the beard out. Shout out to the chief, Eric Church. Springsteen, one of the great songs in country music. Matt Berry, Mike Olick Jr., Marty Smith. Dayton Harrington took the ball off the right side for a gain of one. Harrington again is going to keep it. Now there's nothing that makes me more college football than when you come back from break. Your old Dixieland delight from Alabama. The old Boone, North Carolina. And then all of a sudden the onside kick hits on surprise and you're able to weather that storm if you're at state. And now I think your offensive line head coach got a little sick and tired of going downfield and said, you know what, let's lean on them, get ourselves to a third and manageable here and move the chain. Seven of 10 on third down. And Thomas, you don't slide at our program, you dip your shoulder, you get a first down to move the chains. And now they're going to pick up the tempo here again. I, I think they're going to keep handing it off now that they've got this going. They want to really just take the will from Arkansas State on defense. And this will do it if they could just keep running the clock behind Dietrich Harrington, who's had a nice night as Harrington, the leading rusher for the team. 12 carries, 114 yards. That moves the 13 carries, 118 yards, and the touchdown. And they got an injured player. Looks, Looks like, like a cramp rubbing. Rubbing the cramp. Matt, you know what I'll say for this Arkansas State defense is, coming off of last week where we talked glowingly about the video game numbers for this two quarterback system, and Logan Bonner, and Lane Hatcher, and Dahu Green, and Jonathan Adams, they had to fire their defensive coordinator. They had to make some changes on this team. Nick Paremski takes over, and they said this week that team responded. Players were coming into Blake out Anderson's office and saying, Coach, we appreciate you valuing us, the relationship we have with this coach, 
over making a tough decision that you had to with this coaching staff. This defense has responded with energy. They've taken on a new philosophy. They're playing more downhill. We've seen them timing blitz as well. And so as you look back at the tape, that's going to be one of the things you take away is this defense executed better, maybe not as consistently as you like, but with a very high level of energy. 378 total yards for App State so far in the game. Flag on the play and nearly intercepted by Amir Howard. Looked as if it was going to be All a free five. play. Defense, number 95. Five-yard penalty. Replay, second down. And it's going to be little things like that. That's a couple of times now App State's got him on that. We saw him on one of the long touchdown runs. Two defenders occupying the same gap, not fitting up the run correctly. Those are things you can correct. But again, for a defensive coordinator who said, we want three E's, effort, execution, and expecting to win, you got to start with effort. And he's gotten that much tonight. Quick toss out of the backfield. Good ball movement there by Harrington. It'll be another first down for App State. Tackled on the play by Justin Rice. Daytrick Harrington, four touchdowns in their last outing again 26 days ago. One of just four players with four rush TDs in a game on this season. So he's in some rarefied air already for a guy in a group taking over for Darrington Evans. The Sunbelt Offensive Player of the Year in 2019. They like all their running backs. Cameron Peoples has gotten some carries. Marcus Williams has been in the game, and they want to get Marcus Williams back in the game. What we've seen from Arkansas State all night, they're free hitters. These safeties on the back that you're not accounting for in the blocking scheme, coming up and making plays on the back side. If you're App State, the challenge is you've got to find a way to win on the front side, whether that's your tight ends leading, your tackles getting out and reaching, because that's where the money's going to be if they're blitzing from that back side, if you can get them cut off. So no game there, second and ten. If you're App State, there's absolutely no rush. Call the ball play. 21 point lead, don't want to sit on it, so don't need to be too aggressive as Peoples takes it off the left side, that's going to be a gain of two. Appalachian State has made their history on running the ball, and we've seen that tonight. 225 yards rushing, and ultimately in a game like this, when you're up 31 to 10, rushing's going to close it out. It is, and these long third downs are spot where we've seen Zach Thomas get involved in that action. The defense drops off, occupied with a lot of these receivers. Plenty of rushing lanes for Zach. Eight of 11 on third down tonight. Thomas forced out of the pocket, and he's going to be brought down by the Arkansas State defense. Another good stop out of then. Noel Awachiku on the tackle. So here we go, another stop for Arkansas State, down just three scores, and the ability to punch it when they need to. So a forced punt. Xavier Sabach on the punt. Rashad Paul deep to receive. Fair catch by Paul, perhaps interfered with. And there's the flag. It's going to be catch interference. Just doesn't pull up in time. Another one of those little mistakes that's been haunting them all night. Kick catch interference, kicking feed, number 12, 15-yard penalty, first down. All right, kick catch interference, Arkansas State down three scores. They can fire back quickly. 31-10, App State. On Dahu Green, nine catches, 172 yards, two touchdowns. Not the same tonight, Mike Golden Jr. A little bit of a different case when you're going up against Shamar Jean Charles, 2019 second team all Sun Belt blanketing him everywhere he goes. These windows closing up quick down in the red zone when App State only has to rush three. 
But uh, Appalachian State is all but erased. A guy we talked about, the transfer from Oklahoma, spent a couple of seasons there before coming to Arkansas State. They've got to help get him open now. He's been on an island by himself. Just two receptions, 31 yards. Let's see if Logan Bonner can get to him. And how about that? Speak him into existence. Dahu Green over the middle, across midfield, first down. Nothing outside's been working, so we said early on, get some in-breaking routes. You get an RPO to kind of widen that window, get some of those linebackers out of the clutter, and let them go inside. They're giving him inside leverage all night. They've been trying to take away those double moves. They missed early on with Dahu Green. Hasn't been the same since. Bonner forced out of the pocket. He's just going to throw that away. The problem that remains for Arkansas State is they can't protect up front. They're keeping seven in right now. They're going full line slides, which means a lot of time you're getting blitzes away from that. Your tight ends and running backs are being asked to protect in ways that they're not capable of. The dominance up front that Appalachian State's having against Arkansas State, perhaps a bit surprising with the experience that the Red Wolves bring at that position. Certainly experience, but I, I've limited athleticism you're seeing tonight. A lot of stiff hips on the outsides of that line being exploited by a low center of gravity like Demetrius Taylor. So second and 10, that's Lincoln Perry. And Perry's able to find some running room off the left side. And how about Lincoln Perry? He's going to score. From a play that looks like seven yards and a cloud of dust, Lincoln Perry reads his blocks goes left and 48 yards later it is 31 16 and an extra point away jonathan adams jr the big block to spring perry it's rare that you see a running back score and everyone else run to celebrate with the wide receiver but when you throw a block that is a bone crushing block that we're going to see from jonathan adams here after this kick. So Blake Groupie on for the extra point. And what have we said about Arkansas State? They can score quick. Here's the block. Got him on his heels and just unload. Two, three. That counts. I've been in film rooms. You can argue and you will win for three knockdowns on this play. That's just an effort and a mentality down the field. He's been catching the ball for you all night. And now you see the chains on the sideline there. Romanek, the defensive back, going over to celebrate with a freshman that they are excited about in Lincoln Perry. That's a college football final helmet sticker. That's three dudes, one play. And again, call the play, you're thinking, hey, seven yard gain, move the chains, first down. Your receiver comes in, star receiver at that, takes out three defenders 48 yards later touchdown for a guy that's got a future on Sundays that's the play if you're a scout that really drives home as you're looking towards when you're picking a guy like Jonathan Adams he'll go and do the dirty work for you coming in on a play like that so all of a sudden the two score game and that's where Zach Thomas will take over 25 yard line I mean you didn't think we were just gonna get out of here in a Sun Belt with a beat down did you Everyone should know better than that by now, Matt. We've been here for long enough. And this App State offense has been sleepwalking the last couple of drives here. Two drives ago, inconsistency and bad timing in the passing game. Last drive, going through the motions in the running game here, not able to spring anything. This Arkansas State defense has been aggressive and holding up its end of the bargain since drive one of the second half. So conversely, let's see how aggressive Tony Peterson, play caller, offensive coordinator for App State, gets with this possession after nothing going in the second half. It's Thomas, first play, and a throw to the outside, caught Christian Horn, first down. And for App State, you saw it right there. We saw it start of the game. Throw to set up the run. Last drive, they were gonna try and take it out of them punch it down their throats. Now they're going to turn up the heat. You're going to see the tempo back into this, try and take some of the bite out of an Arkansas State defense coming downhill. That snap count still a weapon as well. Last time Mountaineers had the ball, we saw him bang it up the middle with Patrick Harrington. This time, Nate Noel, the freshman, nothing doing for him, tackled by a host of Red Wolves led by Terry Hampton. And you're relying on a veteran offensive line up front now. 
that's got to use the tools they're getting before the snap. You're seeing pressure coming off that side. You know you're running away. You know that defensive lineman's coming across your face. If you cut that off, you're gashing this team right now. You can't just run blindly out there. This two group is too good and too experienced to be doing that. Big Forrest Merrill also in on that. Got an injured player on the field for Arkansas State. Don't forget Big Ten. Someone was telling me it's week eight of the football season. I was like, well, with all due respect, it's really not because it's week one for the Big Ten, oldest trophy in college football, Minnesota, Michigan, ABC, Little Brown Jug, 98th first, first time they played for the Jug back in 1903, 730 Eastern, 430 Pacific, ABC, and the ESPN app. Excited to see that debut for Joe Milton, the first quarterback starting for Jim Harbaugh that he's recruited out of high school. Again, from some of the Ann Arbor folks have had a good force of talking to. The whispers about this Milton kid are getting loud. I'd say the conversation around Jim Harbaugh is going to get loud pretty soon if they finally don't get something out of that position the way they've been expecting. Vidal Scott, the injured Red Wolves player, taken to the sideline, brings up second and ten. A play fake for Thomas. Can't find anybody, and Thomas is brought down. Sacked on the play by number 45, T.W. Ayers. Don't look now, the fullback that moved over to defensive end to help them out. A mullet we've been hearing about all week, and this is a coverage sack. This is just an effort play by him. Nothing open downfield to force a third and 14. A neck roll and a mullet. Gorgeous. It's beautiful. Sun belt at its finest. You third and 14. And a designed run for Thomas. He's got the entire middle of the field. What great recognition by Zach Thomas. Is he going to score? Yes. Touchdown. An outstanding effort play by Zach Thomas. 60 yards. That was incredible. And that it all goes back to the window dressing that's a part of this App State offense. That was a design run all the way, and they used the motion out of the backfield. We'll get to take a look at it. Giving information to a fifth-year senior at quarterback, the leader of your team, and then allowing him to go out there and execute with the athletic ability that he's got. It was a third and long situation after the sack. He was able to take that defender out of the middle of the field and had no one there Picked up the first down and then some. 60-yard touchdowns. We're going to take another look here to see if he stayed in bounds. And that, that's a no-drama situation. That'll stand. No-brainer. See the feet near the sideline, but doesn't go out. And then that ball hits on the inside of the pylon there. That is a touchdown. He breaks the plane of the end zone with that pylon as the spot. I can't recall the last time that I saw a designed run based on what the quarterback saw open the way it did without one human from Arkansas State anywhere near him. We talk all the time, long yarded situations for a mobile quarterback when you know you've got man coverage and you see everyone turn their back, you've got space to run and he's got that green light go. This is a, a no doubter in here. Again, a great effort play, a dive towards the end zone inside the pylon. Didn't step out of bounds anywhere in here. Turns that corner. When they speak of pace of play in college football, this, this is one I'd clip off and send to them. Unless there's something we're not seeing, this is as obvious as a touchdown as it gets. So they're looking for the feet on the line, but again, I don't see any risk of being out of bounds. The ruling of touchdown is confirmed. Glad we got that right. <laughs> Locked in. Inbounds, touchdown, and what a response from Appalachian State on offense. I, you know, with all due respect to your breakdowns of plays, I'm extra excited for this one because calling the game, we saw it, the state on for the extra point. But I really want the viewer 
to have another look at how this thing actually developed and parted like the Red Sea. It was incredible. We mentioned window dressing this entire time, and they're going to play with the linebacker. Watch the running back right here going to go in motion out of the way on the screen. Quarterback knows he's running with him in man coverage. I've got the middle of the field wide open, and then I've got the ability to make guys miss in space. But that was immediately from the time he saw that, that was exactly what they were looking for on this design. Is that linebacker going to run with him? And when he does, turn and burn. Let's go. Fifth-year senior quarterback, coach and staff told us he embodies everything we are as a program. And tonight, Zach Thomas has put on a show, 13 of 20, 177 yards, three touchdowns, and seven rushes for 82 yards and a touchdown. Just when it seemed as if Arkansas State maybe grabbed a little bit of that momentum back. Now separates themselves, three scores, 38-17. And a nice return for Jeff Foreman, takes it across the 42-yard line. Saturday, UFC 254, Fight Island. Early start time, Nurmagomedov and Justin Gagey. Gagey, Khabib, look, this is a fight of absolute superstars. Noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, ESPN2, ESPN Plus, and ESPN Deportes. Main card, pay-per-view, 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. To order the main card in English and Spanish, ESPNplus.com slash PPV. Mirogomedov and Gaethje on Fight Island here as we wrap up the third quarter. Hatcher to Adams. That'll be a big game. That'll be good enough for a first down, and that'll wrap up the third quarter. End of the first quarter. What an answer from Appalachian State. You see if Lowe, Lane Hatcher and Arkansas State the strings up together. End of the third quarter, fourth quarter coming up here on ESPN. Big Sunbelt game, Sunbelt opener for Appalachian State up 38-17. Arkansas State ball, Lane Hatcher at quarterback and an offense that scored 50 plus points in the last two games, both victories. Needs a big fourth quarter output to get back in this one. Matt Berry, Mike Golick Jr., Marty Smith alongside. The thing you do in this conference is you never count the other team out. Here, first and 10. And that Isaiah Azubake, first carrying, first time caught Azubake's name tonight. And you see, trying to get something going in the run game, you bring T.W. Ayers back, who was playing defensive line for you, moved over from fullback, trying to get someone to give you an extra hat and spring one of these runs, give you some balance. And a gain of one, now Hatcher again, pack pocket collapses, has the roll to his left, he's just gonna throw that out of bounds. We've seen Hatcher tonight, he's had happy feet because he's been unable to kind of set his feet and read the defense. And it's really been whatever App State wants. They've brought pressure and heated him up, bringing six or seven. They've rushed three in some situations. I'd imagine we'll see a four down rush here. Let everyone get eyes on Hatcher right now. He's the little more mobile of the two quarterbacks. Make sure he doesn't give you a dose of what Zach Thomas just gave Arkansas State's defense on the other side on third down. So third and nine. Hatcher pulls it out, pass across the middle, caught by Bowling, and a first down for the Red Bull. Thought we'd have seen a lot more of Bowling tonight. The middle of the field, away from those stellar corners. Some of the RPO action that we've seen, play action passes, getting them a look. Tempo here for Hatcher, heads to the end zone intended for Bowling, falls incomplete. They're gonna throw the flag. Bowling called for it right away, knew there was some contacts. Have another look. Linebacker having a run with the Back inside of three. Defense, number 52, 15-yard penalty, first down. Just Marco Jackson on the coverage, never turned around, looked for the ball. And that's the issue, you can throw up the hands all you want, but if you're in the offensive player's chest and you're not making an attempt on the ball, you make it very easy for the official in that spot. And he's just holding on for dear life. He's running up against a guy in Brandon Bowling, who's a great slot type receiver body for them. 
Now get him back down in the red zone. So all of a sudden, ball down to the 18. And Azubaki again, the ball carrier. And nothing doing there. And Matt, we've seen them now a lot on this drive, pressed up on the outside on Jonathan Adams. You have to imagine right now, you've got enough room and enough real estate there. You keep working this run, run action, whether it's play action or an RPO, and try and give your guys some time. Maybe they move him around on this play as he's lined up in the slot here to start. Yeah, he's one of those receivers you get the sense to probably play any position. Hatcher fakes, again forced out of the pocket to the end zone. And another flag on the play. That was intended for Lincoln Perry, who had found his way out of the backfield. And it looks as if it could be DeMarco Jackson again for the second time on this possession. And certainly being physical, but that ball's completely uncatchable. Pass interference, number 52 defense. Ball will be placed as spot of foul. First down. Yeah, I'm with Jackson on that one. And twice now, they found the target, which means if you're down here, you've had difficulty running. Maybe this is the spot. Reed Tyler, number 87, their tight end, getting his number called. Remember, scored in a similar area of the field last week as he trots onto the field on the left side. Dahu Green, 6'5". He's a big kid. Jonathan Adams, 6'3". He's a big kid. Lincoln Perry stays in the backfield. First and goal now, Arkansas State. and a trick and an end around that goes absolutely nowhere that ends up in the hands of Leroy DeShazer. And a flag is on the play. And I do not get that play call whatsoever. And for an offensive line that struggled all night, this is a play call that leads right to what we're Holding. getting. Offense, number 70. Foul will be declined. Be second down. Let's go! I mean, and there are sometimes you just don't need to get cute for the sake of getting cute, and this is one of them. No contest up front, penetration right away. So you're grabbing and holding because you know the action that's going on behind you. You don't want to give up a turnover. And now you're second in goal from the 22. Not great, Bob. Name's Matt, Mike. You, you, what did I say? You don't want to call second and goal. Stupidity. Collision course. Hatcher. And he's going to go down after a short game. We've seen more of this tonight from Arkansas State than any other time, and this is the desperation you get to. These are not running quarterbacks in the way we've got on the other side, but they've had to try and buy a hat any way they can against the defense that's outmanned them across the line of scrimmage, even sometimes with just three and four down rushers. I'll tell you, the red zone miscues for this team, they're going to come back and watch this film if they can't get six here. The stoppage of play. Runner is ruled down. The previous play is under further review. And I'm, I'm as curious as anyone now. Not sure what they're looking at here. Lane Hatcher After goes down. Review, the ball will be placed at 17-yard line. Spot was correct. Oh, good, good. And now they've checked the spot, and it's third and a long way to go on third down and goal in this situation. You know you're in four-down territory, and you've had a great opportunity and great success exploiting the middle of the field. DeMarco Jackson's been a guy they've been picking on. You've managed to get Brandon Bowling matched up with him. Again, your tight ends have both caught passes for you in this game and play in that area. Set yourself up for manageable in fourth down. Yeah, and at this point, you're thinking, okay, give me third and something to give me fourth and manageable. I, I would I would bet a field goal at this juncture of the game with what the score is is not going to be an option. So we'll see what they do here. Third and goal is Hatcher again has to throw quickly. Has a man wide open, under throws him. And how about this? DeMarco Jackson, who was flagged twice on this drive, comes up with the interception. 
Two pass interferences on Jackson. He gets the last laugh with the interception out of the end zone and a return of 44 yards. And you can go back to red zone miscues for Arkansas State. That will be their undoing tonight. I think I heard DeMarco Jackson yell ball don't lie from down there, but you see the pressure again. Elijah Dirasuba getting the running back back in the quarterback. He throws off his back foot, way under throws that ball to Corey Rucker. Rucker was open. He was for a split second if that timing is there. But the end. Dirasuba been active like the rest of this D-line all night. So Lane Hatcher for the night, Harrington the ball carrier. 8 of 12, 142 yards in the interception. Both of these quarterbacks for two consecutive weeks had thrown at least three touchdowns. Two consecutive weeks. Hasn't been done this century. Tonight, zero TDs. An App State defense that came in with a plan and executed it well. Take away the big plays and count on your bodies up front to be able to handle the line of scrimmage. And they've won that battle time and time again tonight. Quick throw, good yak out of Malik Williams. Going to move the chains for Appalachian State. C.J. Harris on the tackle. Got an injured Arkansas State player over on the Appalachian State sideline. It was C.J. Harris who was there in on the tackle. So let him get across back to field. F. State's ball when we come back. Bullock Jr. add the latest possession of miscues for Arkansas State tonight. Saw, so, I think, poorly designed trick play early on in the game. The attempt at a fake punt broken up by pressure and then this last one, I think the most inexcusable, down in the red zone with everything going your way, and you go for the double reverse. Leads to the interception, they've had a missed field goal. It has not been a stick the landing night for Arkansas State pass to Zach Crosby. It looked like Zach Crosby down on the sideline right now for App State. He's on his own sideline. He'll try to get a little further up the field and see Crosby come up injured. So second and seven. And Harrington has all kinds of room. And that'll move the chains. Gate of nine. And if you're Sean Clark, this is the drive. You grab everybody's face mask on the sideline, and we have a chance to stop all this noise right now, stop any talk of a comeback on that Arkansas State sideline. When you're shutting off, you're seeing the blitz coming backside, you're cutting off, and you're springing for big gains here. There's one more look at the end zone in the pass game before they lean heavy on the run game and finish this drive off. I thought you were calling our call noise. Say no, no more noise this comeback. We're trying to build, build the drama here, Mike Golick Jr. Offensive line coaches that become head coaches hate drama. Offensive linemen and their coaches a little bit neurotic by nature. You guys need to lighten up, lighten up a little bit, you know? Laugh. Matt, when the only <laughs> time your name gets called is when something bad happens, I want you to lighten up a little bit. When you're 300 pounds in every flight of stairs and still fear in your heart and sweat in your shirt, I want you to lighten up a little bit. You know? Lighten up. I'm going to heavy up a little bit. How about that? <laughs> Offensively, you guys are the smartest guys on the team. Everybody knows it. You say you don't care. You don't get the attention of the quarterback and the running. But you guys do. Deep down, you care. Deep down in places I don't talk about at parties, Matt, I want that. I need that. You need the attention as Cameron Peoples off the left side. You know, if there's a reason the offensive lineman. You guys are go-to sound bites. You're very intelligent people. And Sean Clark loves that about his program. But then, you know what you guys offensive linemen do, which I love, 
because I love we before me, you guys always band together. Like, if there's an offensive line movement, not to talk to the media, you guys all do it together. Well, and, and that's the identity that Sean Clark wants with this program. And that's, I think, why offensive line coaches that make that jump to the head coach are so successful, because you're used to managing a team within a team. Sean Clark says he believes the O-line coach has the heartbeat and the pulse of the team in his room. Said they're last on the bus stop, the need to be the leaders of the team. There's that shot to the end, and you talked about, and you spoke it into existence. Christian Wells, touchdown. Zach Thomas tossed his fourth. And when everything screams run, this is set up all by tempo on that route by Christian Wells as everyone's thinking run on this play like we said all night you put the defense in a dilemma when they've got to think am I getting blocked again am I getting hammered again by this offense and just a great job executing by Wells who gets in the end zone to start the night yep. and maybe to finish it off here that's exactly right first touchdown of the night was to Wells that touchdown to Wells and that should just about silence any Arkansas State comeback 45 17 not here. Zach Thomas heard about all the attention we were giving Lane Hatcher and Logan Bonner. He's like, you know what? I'm going to hit you for four touchdowns throwing, one touchdown running, and I am going to be the best player on the field tonight. You keep your video game numbers, you'll see polished execution here. Working through his matchup, taking the information that's given to him, and then making use of his athletic ability when he's given the opportunities. The stats aren't gaudy, but it's efficient and it's management, it's what you expect from a fifth year senior with full command of the offense and great touch on the football. I have 298 total yards and five touchdowns responsible for a career high, tying a career high with his four touchdown passes. And it's all Appalachian State, 45 to 17. As we take a look now at tonight's player spotlight brought to you by Taco Bell. And an easy one here. You put the spotlight on Zach Thomas and he is going to respond. We mentioned the 2018 Sunbelt Offensive Player of the Year. Passed the 5,000 career yards mark against Marshall. 1,000 career rushing yards in the opener of this season. He can get you in every facet of the game. Again, not going to blow you away with the arm strength or anything like that, but just a detail-oriented technician manning the helm of this offense. Mike Golick Jr. pointed out that he's got a tattoo. You love a tattooed quarterback. Want to throw it down to Marty Smith, who may have been a tattooed quarterback back in his day. Martin, what's uh, Zach been like on the sidelines tonight with his team? Well, when Crosby was taken away on that uh, cart, he came over and gave him a big hug. And you can just see how he's the, the, the point of this football team, how he's the leader. Obviously, uh, a fifth-year senior who has been in the program for so long, and as you guys have said countless times, he's the heartbeat of the program. It's been fun to watch him. Every, you can see the respect from his teammates. You can sense the respect from his teammates. And I will say this. I found this interesting when we were chatting with Coach Clark earlier this week. And he kind of said that being at Appalachian State is a little bit like being at Bama in that the fans expect to win, and not only do they expect to win, they expect to win big. He said if we don't win by 30 every week, they wonder what's going on. We're a lot like Alabama that way. And I can tell you, I've been in Alabama a lot, Matty. That is exactly how the Roll Tide faithful are. In fact, Marty Smith and I spent uh, Thanksgiving in Tuscaloosa one year ahead of the Iron Bowl. What did you eat that night? Alabama, Auburn. So <laughs> Marty Smith and I down down in Tuscaloosa. It's a, <laughs> you know, it's a it's Thanksgiving, and you know, I'll be dash gunning if we didn't walk in to open the dorm here. A hey, welcome to Moe's. Ha! Thank, I, I, <laughs> hey, hey, we had Moe's for lunch on Thanksgiving, but then uh, for dinner on Thanksgiving, I think we both ate shrimp and grits. I mean, I'm not really <laughs> sure. We were as far away from a turkey as you could possibly be. And I will say this too, one thing about these Appalachian State students, they're pretty tuned up here on a Thursday evening. They have been yelling my name, I mean loud, like really obnoxiously, for three quarters now. And I do appreciate that. I appreciate 
their conviction for their team and the fact that they know my name and how grateful they are that I know how to say the word Appalachian. Thank it you. It is Appalachian. Maddie, I think I actually heard you say an Appalachian No, once. you did it. Ooh. No. Ooh. Oh. Party foul. I okay. will. I will find okay. a PA here in Bristol to watch this entire broadcast. There's no. <laughs> if if, if uh, I said Appalachian, okay. Look, I don't want to call you out if that's. Yeah. Oh no, 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 no. That that's a honey. That's a honey. <laughs> if you say an Appalachian, not only that, you you're run out of town here, man. We're mountain people. We don't play that mess. I, the Appalachian Trail ran right by my front door growing up. It is Appalachian. Matt, that is why. When we got onto every coach's call, Marty Smith was greeted with the biggest smile and the best how you doing of anyone in our crew. He is a celebrity in these parts. Marty Smith is Boone, North Carolina. That might be him. Big 10 season, can't wait for it this week. And according to FPI, some of the key games and that conference starts this weekend. They'll be playing for the Little Brown Jug. Can P.J. Fleck row that boat to Indianapolis? You've got Ohio State, Penn State, Halloween weekend. And of course, the game, Michigan, Ohio State, December 12. Did you know mm. that the Big Ten, according to our playoff predictor, at 33% has the best chance of getting two teams into the college football playoff. I'm a bit shocked, especially considering what we've seen already in the SEC. I know they've suffered losses, but Georgia didn't drop much after that Alabama loss. I think there's a lot of respect, especially for that Georgia defense and what they put on tape already. And then, again, Florida with the upset, but one loss. That's right. But someone's going to have to take down Bama in the SEC championship. But if you, you know, looking at what other team maybe the math loves in the, in the Big Ten, you've got Penn State. That'll be a big one with Ohio State. I know they love Wisconsin. Jack Cohn out. Graham Mertz, the super recruit at quarterback in. You've got to replace Jonathan Taylor. And then we, we had talked about Harbaugh. Is Milton finally the guy that you had mentioned without the receivers, an offensive line that, that went off to the NFL? What do they have in Ann Arbor uh, for Jim Harbaugh? four all-conference players up front that became draft picks into the NFL. A lot of them see an early playing time. That was a rock-solid group for them last year in front of Shea Patterson. Are going to be a lot of new in the air, and maybe that's good, that changeover for Jim Harbaugh and Michigan as they try and break through. You know, double-digit win seasons are great, but we know the measuring stick you're judged by in Ann Arbor, and it's beaten Ohio State and it's getting your way into the Big Ten title fight. Yeah, to be fair, though, a lot of people aren't beating the Buckeyes right now. But again, in, in Justin Fields, one of the front runners for the Heisman Trophy, although with what Trevor Lawrence has done in the first month and a half, I don't know that there's going to be anyone to catch him. But J.K. Dobbins off to the NFL. Trey Sermon transfers in from Oklahoma. K.J. Hill off to the NFL. I mean, they've always got talent, but at least early on, you know, we'll see what the Buckeyes can do. And maybe perhaps one of the cruelest scheduling things I've ever seen. As mouthy as Nebraska was mm -hmm. during this the, the postponement of play, you're like, oh okay. You want oh, here's Ohio State. Oh you're gonna leave. Okay, okay have at it. Alright, well here here you go. Here's a team that could knock you out of the conference for good. Punt for Appalachian State. Rashad Paul deep to receive it. Gets it inside his own 20. He's going to be taken down at the 32 with a flag on the play. Yeah, we had talked about you know conversations around Jim Harbaugh, which I find asinine with what he's done with that program. But Scott Frost now, local boy, similar to that of Jim Harbaugh in Ann Arbor. Let's start, start winning some games. And you've invested in that program, adding to the facilities. They've got all the support. During return, illegal block in the back. Number nine, return team. Be half the distance to the goal. First down. All right, so 45 17 will be Lane Hatcher at Arkansas State's ball when we come back. That Barry Mike Golick Jr., Marty Smith, Saturday slate. 
It looks good when you see a Big Ten logo on there. I am excited to be a part of the studio coverage all day and night on ESPN. And I, Look, Marty Smith works so hard. Mm. He's going to run his way from this game to where? Martin, where are you covering this weekend? Chapel Hill, North Carolina, Matty Ice. I have the NC State Wolfpack at 4-1, facing the North Carolina Tar Heels at 4-1. I think it's the first time in more than a quarter century they're both ranked. So uh, it's going to be a good one. I mean, NC State, of course, they lost Devin Leary uh, for a couple months with, uh, with that broken leg, and it'll be interesting to see how Bailey Hockman responds at quarterback. They have one of the best linebacking cores in the country in Raleigh this season, and uh, in Chapel Hill, we all know how good Sam Howell in that offense is, and they, too, have a tremendous linebacking core. It's going to be a great one. I can't wait to get there, see our guy Mac Brown, yeah. and see what Dave Dorn and the Wolfpack can do with him. Hey, Marty, I want you to do me a favor when you're down there. I want you to go have a nice conversation with NC State offensive coordinator Tim Beck. And I want you to ask uh, Tim okay. Beck. I want you to go to Tim Beck, and I, I want you to say, Coach, what do you know about Matt Barry? I just Barry? talked to him yesterday. All right, ask him what he knows about Matt Barry. Okay. M Marty, I'm just glad okay, to hear you've good. done all uh, this prep. So you're going to have to carry the guy in the booth with you because I know you got Mike Golick Sr. on the call for that one in the booth, and he's a lot to handle. So thankfully, you're on the call for this one to clean up the act a little bit. It's going to be a unique challenge. It's a lot of Golick this week for me. But uh, fortunately, you both are very, very well prepared, both very funny and amazingly kind. Uh, apparently, I'm going to do a tale of the Golick tape on Saturday. We'll see who oh. wins my legal pad debate. This is interesting. So what, wow. go, what goes into that preparatory work? Um, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> I'm going to have to go home and do a scouting report on Junior, and then I guess uh, maybe midway through the third quarter I'll decide whether he did a better job than his old man. Seems like the right thing to do. As you saw a couple of Arkansas State players get taken <laughs> off. C.J. Harris was one of them. Hatcher to throw deep. Ooh. And it's caught. That's a good pitch and catch there. Hatcher to number 13, Jeff Foreman. You know, most people don't know this about, about the Golics, but you both are... are are borderline trim underwear models at this point. Listen, I, I don't say this lightly, but it's been said by a lot of people, the word zaddy getting thrown around with my father. He grows the beard out during quarantine. He's lost a bunch of weight. It makes me very uncomfortable, but I am proud of the All old start. man. Keep him away. Number seven, five yard penalty, first down. Yeah, senior looks like he's, he's gone lettuce, high protein, Healthy fats. Make no mistake, he's still inviting. I'll be shocked <laughs> if he doesn't sneak a donut into the booth here tomorrow. <laughs> you can book that one to thine own self be true just a few less times a month. Now this game here with 237 is getting little wheels off up front. False start, offense, number seven. Five yard penalty, replay first down. Tail of the tape, though. That's an interesting game for to have Marty Smith play with the Golics. Dangerous. It's a dangerous game. Because I feel like with him, with Senior having last word, he's going to win. Well, and I just think there's the bias. Obviously, Dad's been doing this for a while. Marty's a nice guy, so he's not going to want to offend my dad. I understand how this is going to shake out already. The deck is stacked oh. against me. Hatcher takes a hit there from number 12 in the App State defense. That's Steven Jones. See right here, these quarterbacks have taken some shots over the course of the nine, whether it's been Bonner or Hatcher. Both trying to extend plays, both used a little more in the run game than we're used to, and going to be feeling it. It's going to be a nice tub day tomorrow. Second and 18, and... Hatcher just throws it incomplete. Give me a big picture thought as we head into the college football weekend 
obviously the storylines, the Big Ten returning. But here we are embarking on the third week in October with plenty to talk about. Well, and I think you mentioned it. New quarterbacks, a lot of hockey line changing personnel. We talked about Michigan, Wisconsin, what they've got to replace in Jonathan Taylor. And remembering that it's week one for this team. And you said it might be the middle of the season, but it feels like we're starting over again. That's going to also be the football because remember, they had a more disjointed preseason than anybody. Yeah. For so long, thought Big Ten football was off, got the news that they're back on. And so now they're coming back to campus. They're getting back on the practice field a lot later than everyone else, a lot later than their body clock is used to in these instances. We're creatures of habit inside that locker room, Matt. Theirs was thrown off more so than any of the other conferences. Now them along with the MAC, the Pac-12, all the others coming back in the middle and the end of the season. Marty, let me get a final thought out of you, a big pick you're heading into the weekend. Uh, sorry, I was talking to the sports information director for the Appalachian State Mountaineers since I'm standing on their sideline. Uh, I had Clemson last week, Maddie, and they are a buzzsaw. It is amazing to me to watch Trevor Lawrence and his command of that offense and the leadership capability that he has and how he that entire team gravitates to him. Travis Etienne, on and on. They're just loaded. They have so many pros on offense and defense. Uh, to me, I haven't seen Bama in person yet and they look really good, but Clemson looks like the best team in America. Where college football is watched, Nacho's party packs bring the fun. Wherever the students are, the Live My Student section lives. Learn more at livemystudentsection.com. That's a picture that would make the late, great Bob Ross, happy trees, happy clouds, foliage in those Blue Ridge Mountains in Western Connecticut. It's gonna beat the devil out of him. <laughs> right up the middle, coming up next, Sports Center, Bucci, Nabil, Kareem, they're gonna show you how the Big Ten's return will impact all the college football, plus live post game. Had a little NFL tonight, Giants and Eagles, NFC East. Tiger Woods did not look ready for the Masters today. That's Sports Center next right here, ESPN and the ESPN app. You know, in the season of COVID, we've seen so many games postponed. Appalachian State was a victim of two of their games. I mentioned Florida's had a couple of their games postponed, LSU, and then this weekend against two. I just hope, as a college football fan, that we get to see this thing through start to finish every power five conference all of these games being played and we get to see some bowl games in a healthy college football playoff and matt you've mentioned it wanting to see it through but what we've gotten at the beginning especially with the delay for some of these conference an appreciation for the american for the sun belt for these group of five conferences that may not always get the headlines we got the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers ranked this week. Yep. We need to take time to appreciate some of these programs getting more shine because of the landscape. Appalachian State, the winner tonight, 45 to 17. From Artie Smith, Mike Golick Jr., I'm Matt Berry. Thanks for watching and thanks to our entire crew for working hard tonight. Sports Center is coming up in 15 seconds.